I'd like to call to order the BFT committee. At this time, Dr. Trahan will do the prayer and the uh, pledge. If everybody would please stand. Lord, please be with us in this meeting. In dealing with the agenda at hand, may we all respect each other's opinions. May we learn to respect each other and value the, the, the worries and the concerns of others. May we learn how to reject ideas without rejecting people. Share visions, although we may not share the same vision. May this meeting be for each of us an opportunity to be servants of the people we represent. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Trunha. Please know that myself as chair, vice chair, Mr. Harding, and member Dr. Trunha are all in attendance, along with um, Every board member, with the exception of Mr. Lagarde, is in attendance, uh, the superintendent and members of his staff. Consideration of approval of bid received for the light bulbs bid for the 23-24 school year. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications for the light bulbs bid for the 23-24 school year from Economical Janitorial and Paper Supplies, LLC, P.O. Box 23607, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70183. So move, Dr. Traha, second, Mr. Harding. Um, any public comments? Dr. Traha? Yes, sir. Mr. Harding? Any other board members? Yes, sir, Mr. Hamner? Just a quick question. Is, is this a flat amount or is it uh, by the items we buy? Uh, Ms. Vauclin? Oh, Ms. Dugas, sorry. <laughs> One of y'all. <Okay. laughs> I knew her back then. <laughs> That's okay. I knew her mama. It's by the items we buy. It's an as needed. Um, it's an as needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll stay for the next one if you want me to. If you want. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Dugas, yes, if you want to stay there. Any uh, other comment? Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number four, consideration of approval of bid received for the grease trap and sewer sump station service bid for 23-24 school year. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications for the grease trap and sewer sump station services bid for the 23-24 school year from Vinny's Sewer Treatment Plants. P.O. Box 504, Berg, Louisiana, 70343. So move, Mr. Um, Harding. Second. Second, Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Harding? Ms. Uh, Dr. Traha? Yes, sir. Any other board members? Any objections? Any questions for this beautiful young lady? <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Dugas. Uh, hearing none, motion passes. Number five, consideration of approval of substantial completion of the building repair projects at South Down Elementary and Grand Caillou Middle Schools. Mr. Merling Lirett. Yes. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated June 17, 2023 for building repair project at South Down Elementary and Grand Caillou Middle Schools and ratify change order number one in the amount of $7,718.53. South Down Elementary School aluminum gate repairs and reseam metal roof panels subject to the punch list. Upon completion of the punch list and final inspection, balancing change order and receipt of the lien free certificate, authorize the release of retainage and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move Dr. Traha, second Mr. Uh, Harding. Any public comments? Mr. Um, Lee Rat, if you want to talk about it a little bit, let us know. Yeah, what's well, going on. it's the uh, substantial completion for the repairs to Grand Cayey Middle and South Down Elementary uh, with the punch list. Some of the items on the punch list have already been completed. The contractors come in and taking care of the, I think it's one or two items maybe at Grand Cayey Middle uh, that was done. He was in at South Down last week or the week before, I think, taking care of the punch. We, we inspected it middle of june so he we gave him the punch copy of the punch list and he started working on it since then so and then uh just the, the balancing change order of some 
pan roof panels there and some some gates that we had to add to the contract okay so. and that's for the seven thousand seven that's correct yes, yes sir. sir okay thank you any other uh board yes yeah, mr uh dehart mr Ongeron, is this uh repairs being with fema funding or is through a uh, uh, maintenance fund? FEMA. Yes, sir. thank you Jeff. any other board members any objections hearing none motion passes thank you mr loretta i'm sure we're going to see you in a little bit huh Number six, consideration of approval of substantial completion of the roof repair project at Homer Junior High. Um, Mr. Rick Ferner, is he in? Uh, do we know? They're not here. Okay. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated June 8, 2023, for the roof repair project in response to Hurricane Ida at Homer Junior High School. Subject to the punch list, upon completion of the punch list and final inspection and receipt of the lien free certificate, authorize the release of retainage and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move Mr. Harding, second Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Harding? board members any objections hearing none motion passes number seven consideration of approval of bid received for the building repair project at Berg Elementary School mr. Lee Red Houston Lee Red the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received meeting all specifications for the building repair project in response to Hurricane Ida at Berg Elementary School from Delcon LLC PO box 916 Berwick Louisiana 70342 in the amount of six hundred eight thousand dollars and establish a total project budget in the amount of six hundred seventy six thousand six hundred eighty six dollars funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds six hundred nine thousand seventeen dollars and forty cents and local funds sixty seven thousand six hundred sixty eight dollars and sixty cents and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto so move mr. Harding second, second. dr. Traha any public comments Mr. Houston Lebret. Yes, I um, happen to have had experience with Dalcon, so I'm I'm uh, I'm pleased with uh, you know the outcome, and looking forward to working with them. So anyway, we, they weren't actually the lowest bid on the project. The uh, low bidder actually uh, backed out. They withdrew their bid for mathematical error. So, but anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to working with Dalcon. Very good. Does any board member have a question for Mr. You said yes, uh, Ms. Benoit. Um, just briefly, I, I'm assuming that not all of the repair was hurricane damage, and that's why we're using some local funds to uh, subsequent the, the other. Yeah, that's the 10%. Oh, that's the 10%. Yes, okay, so they all are related to hurricane. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Um, Same question. That was a question, yeah. Okay, any other board members? Anything else for Mr. Houston? Thank you, sir. And I think we'll see thank you in a little later. Thank you. Huh? All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number eight, consideration of approval of bid received for the building repair project at West Park Administration Building. Mr. Houston Lee Red. Hey, look at you. You're yeah. Right yeah. John, you just thank appeared you. quickly. Thank you. <laughs> the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications for the building repair repair project in response to Hurricane Ida at West Park Administration Building from Knockans Painting and Waterproofing, Inc., P.O. Box 526, Thibodeau, Louisiana, 70302, in the amount of $230,000 and $230,000 dollars fifty. Two hundred thirty thousand fifty-six dollars. Sorry about that. And establish a total project budget in the amount of two hundred fifty-eight thousand three hundred ninety dollars. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds, two hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred fifty-one dollars, and local funds twenty-five thousand eight hundred thirty-nine dollars. And further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. 
So move, Dr. Tra. Second, Mr. Harding. Any public comments? Again, Mr. Uh, Houston, Lee Rat. I'm very familiar with Knockant's painting, and uh, I'm, again, I'm they're a local company. We've done quite a bit of work together, so I'm looking forward to working with them as well. And I've had conversation with them regarding their bid. They're very comfortable with it, so I definitely recommend that we proceed with Knockant's painting. Awesome. Okay, thank you, Dr. Trahan. Yes, sir. Mr. Um, Harding. Any other board members? Yes, Mr. Uh, Ford. Just to follow up with what Mr. Houston said, uh, Nakans is actually working on Timber High for the last couple of months and over the summer, so I've seen the work that they do. And they're very professional and they clean up their area when they're done and they make sure, you know, they work with administration to, to make sure they're scheduling accordingly. Okay. And uh, so they're very thorough and I'm pleased to see that they're working for us too. Yes. Good. Th thanks for sharing that, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ford. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. I think you're good for now. <laughs> Number nine, consideration of approval of substantial completion of the abatement project at East Homer Elementary, Village East Elementary, and Coto Bayou Blue Elementary Schools. Mr. Dustin Viviano? Not here either. Okay, did I say that name right? <laughs> okay. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated May 30, 2023 for the abatement project at East Homer Elementary, Village East Elementary, and Coto Bayou Blue Elementary Schools, subject to the punch list upon completion of the punch list and final inspection and receipt of the lien-free certificate, authorize the release of retainage, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move Mr. Harding, second Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Harding, Dr. Trahan, any other board members? Any objections? None. Motion passes. Number ten: consideration of approval for authorization of advertise to advertise for bids for automated fuels and dispensing services. The committee recommends that the board approve and authorize the purchasing department to advertise for bids for automated fuels and dispensing services. So moved, Dr. Traha. Second, Mr. Harding. Any public comments? Dr. Traha? No, sir. Mr. Harding? Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. <clears throat> Number 11, consideration of approval of substantial completion of the site preparation for Lacash Middle School temporary campus project. Mr. Daniel Bruce. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated July 14, 2023 for the site preparation for Lacash Middle School temporary campus project and ratify change order number one, the amount of $3,850 additional trimming, tree trimming subject to the punch list upon completion of the punch list and final inspection Balancing change order and receipt of the lien free certificate, authorize the release of retainage, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move, Dr. Tra. Second, Mr. Harding. Public comments? Mr. Daniel Bruce. Good evening. So we had Fire Marshal and the Terrebonne Parish Permit Office uh, inspect yesterday. Everything's full green. We're ready to go. Awesome. Good. Are, the, um, is, are the floors done? They yet, are black. Uh, cleaning and waxing floors as we speak. I think they're supposed to be done by tomorrow. Tomorrow. And furniture's there or yeah. coming. Yeah. So when when can <coughs> teachers, I don't know, I guess that would be your question, not you necessarily. As, as soon as all that's finished, probably sometime. Next week. Next week. Okay, fantastic. Okay. I'm sure they refer to the, there'd be our pod, but we have a lot of the uh, supplies and teacher stuff. Boxes. Okay. So we're just going to move the pod. Good, good. So, right, I'm sure they're excited about that. Yeah. So, um, did I go to you guys yet, Dr. Trump? I've seen the pods are not uh, moved yet, so that's going to be moved with the teaching supplies that are in front of Lacash, because those pods are still in place in front of Lacash. They haven't been moved yet. So, a lot of the teacher supplies are in those pods. The pods will be moved to the school, and then the teacher teachers will be able to get the people that they be close by for things to be unloaded. Yeah, yeah, we'll unload them and they'll just kind of put them in place. Put them in place. Any other board members? Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Right. Appreciate it. Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. 
Number 12, informational. The rest would be informational. Matter bearing upon grass cutter contract, Mr. Dehart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, for quite a while, I've been concerned about the, the manner that the grass cutting was taking place. Uh, you visit many schools, and even at now, when that hurricane hit, I backed off on trying to see about getting something done. And it's not on staff. We have principals and custodians and multiple schools. It just kept getting worse and worse, and that's what prompted me putting this on the agenda. And I do know the staff is addressing it. I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing now. It's just that uh, a lot of grass was being cut. <coughs> trimming was not being done and it kept getting worse and worse and worse and it was all over the parish it's not just any school all over the parish whenever I've seen about damage and updates on, on things I started seeing that so I figured to put it on the agenda to bring it and I don't know if anybody else had any comments but all I'm saying is that we spend very good money on trying to get that done we used to have our own people years ago and it's so much nicer now but the trimming just got out of place, whether they trim or they need to spray. So I'm very pleased to see, not because I put it on the agenda, I was just going to have a discussion. That's why I said information only. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very pleased that what the outcome is, and I thank the superintendent and staff for what, whatever was being done. But I just know that in their contract from years past, it's supposed to weed eat and trim or spray. So I think that's still in there. I never saw the contract recently. I just was trying to revisit the situation, make sure it's being done. Thank you. Thank you for making us all aware of that, Mr. Thank Dehart. You. Appreciate it. Mr. Uh, Ogeron. that was over there that we discussed on the corner of uh, Martin Luther King and St. Charles, uh, according to the parish. I'm just saying, they say it's us, and I know you hear two stories, but that's fine. At least it's done. It's uh, Mr. Uh, Knockham, Clay Knockham, helped assist me because I asked, because I wanted to see, and I just got response yesterday. So I'm just saying, thank God they come and clean, help, clean it up and cut it down. Hopefully, whatever we have to do from this day forward is going to get better. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Ogeron, you wanted to? You, you good, Mr. Ogeron? Mr. Ford? I'm going to be a lot less subtle. It's uh, I've looked at a lot, of, a lot of our properties, and I've done some research, and I've looked at the contracts, and I've come to find that it's Cooley uh, Lawn Care Service that keeps dropping the ball. In fact, HL Bourgeois right now looks horrible. Uh, I've visited the place three different times in the last three weeks waiting to see if something was going to be done and nothing's been done. Uh, they are responsible for all of the landscaping on our campuses, ditches, athletic fields, tennis courts, uh, all the areas in between. So um, I have fielded several complaints about them and it's kind of one of those situations where fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I think we're in a situation now where we're on that fool me twice and uh, I think something needs to be done because I have seen um, several times with people have sent me images of them leaving their equipment on our lawns um, smoking on our properties just leaving a mess when they go and actually I've heard also about them getting cut sheets is what they refer to when they get a grass cut uh, signed without that job actually being done and then sometimes two or three days after the two day uh, requirement that's that's in the contract so I think it's time we really revisit this um, now you know you take everything with a grain of salt some of the complaints I feel that have been from some of the other uh, lawn care companies but 
I have also had complaints from administrators and athletic coaches, athletic directors. So, look, we're already facing an uphill battle with all this construction and everything that's going on and this heat this summer. I get it, but we're paying you to do a job and you bid on that job and as if you wanted it. Take some pride in what you're doing. Okay, I wouldn't present my own property at my own house like they're doing with these fields at these schools. So, uh, if, if Cooley wants to come to our board meeting, anybody knows them, call them up. Because I've called their number several times. I've called the, the wife that's supposed to be the owner, which is actually the, the, the uh, wife of the husband that is doing the work. And there's some other issues going on that I'm not going to bring up here, but they are uh, they are going against the contract, and I think it's time we get something done. So, okay. thank, thank you, you, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ogeron, do we have other uh contracts with other companies or it's just Cooley that covers all of our schools? Um, so the, 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 we have us, we have four others. Four? This is all, this is all. So, it, it, go ahead, yeah, uh, go ahead. So Mr. Ford, I, I, I agree. Uh, and that, that is on us, it is on us. I'm not passing above any, that, that's on us. Uh, we've got to get better, we've got to get a better system. Uh, and, and the cut sheets that, that, that for a football turf field and you got grass growing around the field. I mean, that's, that's not acceptable. Um, you know, that's the reason why we, you know, put the turf field there because of, to make the field look nice and neat. Then in between the, uh, the track and the stadium, the grass is almost as tall as me, you know. So I think what, what, what Mr. Ford is asking for, I mean, it's not a matter of who know their number and call them to come here, we can demand them to come to this committee to answer these questions. I mean, we're the boss, they're not our boss. They they answer to us. They answer to us. They, we don't have, we're not at their mercy. If their work is not acceptable, and then we need to terminate them and move on to, to another vendor. Because, I mean, people, people want to work. So, I mean, I, I, I would uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, is, is that uh, we can, put them on our next building and sites committee meeting and they need to be addressed. Instead of just talking around the table about, you know, trying to get in contact with them, bring them here. We their boss. We pay them good money. Thank you. Thank you, very, very good point. I think we do need to do that and address them. Uh, yes, Ms. Benoit. Uh, do we have any recourse within that contract? Um, like are there any stipulations well, about them not yeah, performing? Yes, yes, and so you have to kind of be careful that you, you don't overreact initially. You've got to mm -hmm. do a certain amount of time. That's all spelled out in the contract. You act prematurely and, and, and terminate their repercussions from them to us. So okay. we, we're, we're kind of in that phase right now. We need to give you the proper amount based on the contract and the elements. Okay. Like a I certain would, amount of days. They have to rectify problems. That's fine. I, I think before they come before the board, um, all board.
board member should have a copy of that contract to read it prior to them addressing us so that we understand what we're dealing with. Correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, it's, it's a service. It's not like it's a, a service contract <laughs> and if a person not providing the service, you have more leeway to let a contract to go. But it's spelled out very clearly how much right. you got to do. When no, you I'm saying, no, I'm just saying, right. You've got to conform and, right. and give them a certain amount of time to rectify it. If they don't, then you can take action. So we're at the well, maybe, maybe in the near future that when we, when we award these contracts, we need to make these contracts favorable toward uh, being able to uh, disqualify a vendor that's not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Instead of having, I'm not trying to say we, we got it wrong now. Well, that, would, that would be the easy thing. I mean, that'd be yeah, the easiest yeah. thing to do is make the contract more more feasible, that well, more friendly for us yes. to the board to allow these people or to terminate them if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. trying to beat this dead horse but I'm gonna tell you uh, multiple phone calls I'm talking about since the storm and up to up to now parents request this board years ago to go and get lawn service because they wanted their children and what I saw in, in those years I think Mr. Harding you may be on the board and Mr. Belmont might have been on the board at that time I'm not positive but what I'm saying is that the cost rose so high to get the service that we have but at the same time, our custodian was very thankful because the hay that was in the yard tracks in the, into the schools. Then they got to maintain and clean it. Parents were complaining about their kids' their shoes was all wet and, and nasty with the grass, you know, because it was hay. But guess what? All of, all of those phone calls, I tried to put the fire, s slow it down because of the hurricane. You know, we had to recover from that. That was a priority for me, but at the same time, that's again like I say I'm not here to just complain but this is the last rumors I heard and it, it should stop here is that why should I have to trim if the others is not trimming and I'm not naming nobody because I'm just saying it's hearsay and all I'm saying to you that whenever you ride around and see some people that's in the audience that was at different schools I can tell you they done saw and it wasn't done all I'm saying to you is that we all got to work together to make it happen because the people we work for is the parents of this parish and we have a responsibility to do what we pay for we need to get services thank you That's thank you mr dehart all right well hopefully we can get this cleared up real soon thank you thank you all uh number 13 mr ryan smith uh hurricane ida response Bocart. Do you cut Evening, grass? ladies and gentlemen. Yes. You, I, I know that's kind of a tough <laughs> act to follow there. You know, um, I can say that a lot of the grass around uh, Acadian and, and East Homa and, and Village East it looks actually pretty nice. So I mean, I know some of them though. We definitely need uh, a little more action there. Um, I good evening and. Um, see that you have all the uh, architects that have come up and I think last time we, we had a lot of overlap on that and typically we give you I know that you have in your, your handouts there the kind of overall schedule and then detailed out for each school um, what's what's going on and uh, a little update there uh, what I kind of wanted to do tonight and I'm certainly here to answer any questions as well but uh, you know for uh, expedience sake I just kind of wanted to, to show what's going on in the program sort of overall um, and so we currently have uh, 11 contracts that have been um, that, that are out that are awarded um, several uh, tonight you know so Berg and, and West Park were um, uh, just awarded uh, tonight or will be awarded at the, the next uh, meeting had the recommendations there um, you know, South Downs being punch list. So a lot of these things are, are being complete, um, which is nice. Acadian, uh, I know Shelly's going to talk quite a bit about that, uh, but uh, really coming along very nicely and uh, at, at an expedient rate that we're uh, very excited about. Um, so overall, the, the contracts uh, that we have out, we have uh, 11 schools for that, uh, two bids that are currently out right now. 
uh, and then three more that are going out for bid that'll be by the next um, uh, by the next uh, uh, board meeting um, or committee meeting we'll have those ready for you and and really that's that's kind of where we are I mean everything else is you know a, a, I know that the question's going to say up a little Caillou and, and Ellender, and you know we're, we're kind of at that FEMA level, so where it's, uh, you know, I hate to say, on hold. But, uh, but really, other than that, I, I know I appreciate uh, your patience. Um, I know it's taken a while for us to, to get to this point, but um, you know we had always said that you know it takes a little time to get the activity going, but once the activity is going, then it's then it's going. I mean, um, really have, you know, these schools are all happening simultaneously. But that's not to say that um, it's being done without uh, principal participation. And I know some of it is going to, to bleed into the school year. Uh, some of them just flat out have to go into the school year. And so the uh, principals and, and Becky and the, the administration has done a fantastic job of getting everything coordinated about um, you know, getting electronics. Uh, Chris has done a great job of getting the IT in and out that we need um, and just making it so it's seamless. Uh, seamless and safe, I guess is the best way to put it, for um, for the children and for really everybody um, in there. Um, so that's that's kind of what I got. Um, you know, any details we can talk with the architects about, it, or if you have anything about the program, please feel free to ask. Yes, Mr. Uh, well, first of all, committee members. Not back picking to on any school, but the ones that it says still waiting for FEMA determination. Hey, okay. that's two years. It, one more month's gonna be two years between you. Y'all and Mr. Adam and everybody else, the staff. How much longer before we're going to be determined what it, what it's going to be? Can you kind of get any time frame? Because every month is the same thing. I cannot. And, and I'm telling you, I went to Washington D.C. a month ago, and our legislators, they're going to see this. And all I'm saying is, I'm here to help, I'm not here to complain. All I'm saying is that to be determined, to be determined. We got to have, have an answer one way or another. But these schools need to be fixed. Mr. DeHart, we're going to have um, Adam, Mr. FEMA, come up. <laughs> I know he's working his tail off, so I'm not here. Yeah. Not a complaint, Adam. No. Um, so the ones I'm assuming that are on hold, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Upper Little Caillou, um, it is moving along. I know last month we said it's moving. Further, we're hoping to have an answer by the fall um, for obligations. So that is going. Ellender is in the beginning phases of it. Y'all only decided about two, three months ago. So FEMA's in the beginning review. So that's probably gonna be a while out. Um, I don't know what other ones are Grand on Kai FEMA Ellender. hold. Grand Kai, okay, well that's the other one, but it's the same. It's about a month between Upper Little Caillou. So I'm expecting to have both of those an answer by fall. Um, but you walk the campuses with FEMA. FEMA uh, yeah, so this past, so the main campus is one, but FEMA is every item, every building on campus. So last week we went to the portables and did site visits at the portables for them to determine that they are obviously not able to be rebuilt um, at Grand Caillou. So we, and we're working on that now. I mean, it's a slow process. Y'all have 200 buildings across the whole campus. We had to go through architects, but it's in the process. Can I ask him one more question? Yeah. And just for information. Okay, the campuses that are waiting to be determined, if you met with FEMA, is there any way, could the public just keep calling, we don't see nothing happen? And what I mean is that even demolition, mm -hmm. they know something's happening after. If we got to wait another year before we start demolishing, it's going to take two extra years to get something built. If, if it's you will not wait another uh, year for demolition. Um, like I said, when fall comes, we could probably start that process if they agree on what we approve. I don't see any reason they won't approve what we've been submitting. It's been flying through very smoothly with little questions, um, but we don't want to jump the gun and demo a building and they don't approve it and you're out. 14, 15 million dollars. But isn't FEMA obligated for those schools that are, are declared 100% you know, damaged? Well, that's what we're waiting for their they're approval. Gonna they're going to refund us some money anyhow. All of these uh, project managers and everything else, you know, I'm talking about, you know, that's all reimbursable. So why isn't the demolition going to be reimbursable? It, it will be, but if you demo the building and it wasn't a 50% and they don't agree on the 50%, and you demo a building, you don't have a school because they won't pay for you. They don't agree for the rebuild. It's a process. Because they'll say you need to repair the school, but you can't. 
if you dim it, you're not demo it, you're not repairing the school. Um, so it all ties into that. You don't want to demo something that's not approved, and then you have no building, and you're stuck with having to fund it out of your own pockets. Um, but we are working toward it. Like I said, fall, we, it's been about a year review already, and we, they, we expected it about a year. Um, October is when we did the submittal. It's in review, but it's, like I said, it's going through smoothly. We haven't had a lot of questions. It's in the last phases of review. So we're not expecting to have any more questions come up. We're just waiting for that final obligation. Wait bro broke the bridge. The wait mm -hmm. breaks the bridge. I'm just telling you right now, the legislators, when I went to D.C., they want updates, and I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them a bunch of food. Yeah, I mean, they've been reviewing it. They've been fast shocked and up a little Caillou and Grand Caillou. They're we, probably going to be the first ones. School. Well, yeah, well. We, we need to have stuff started. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's 50%, whether it's 90%, whatever. We still need to get things started. Yep, and that's what the architects and the project managers are working on. They're doing the repairs. It's the ones that you're waiting for approval. If you're not repairing in kind and you're trying to do something completely different, that's the ones that take a while to review. FEMA is not going to hand you $15 million just for fun. I know that. I know how FEMA works. Okay. I've been here a long time. Yep. Thank and you. Okay. Every course yep. Thank oh, wait, wait. Hold up, Adam. Let me go to Ms. Crowder. She had a question for him. I do have a question. That's crazy. Uh, it's up there right now. Uh, what is the cost of Yeah, so from our numbers, we have decided it. We've submitted it to FEMA. They need to review and agree with what we're saying. You just, I mean, like the architects and the board. That it needs to, come down. Just gotta get things to approve it. And if they don't approve it, then they'll say you need to repair it. They have a temporary campus behind the campus, yes. Yeah, so there's actually several, and I'll let Shelley kind of get more into de de the details about that, but um, sort of yes and no. I mean, we have a plan for, uh, you know, conducting school through there, but there's several projects going on at once. Uh, there's the roof project. Uh, we're going to refix the, the interior, and there's also ESSER money projects that are going to do the, the chiller plan. I think you have them here as well. But So it's kind of several, but we're all coordinating to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, they're contractually bound, but then there's also just the reality of it, and that's just uh, me going out there a lot and making sure that that's all done. Um, you know, that's eyes on the eyes on the prize kind of thing. I do, I do. Uh, the the Laparus, the roofing contractor, has been um, uh, incredibly forthright, and they're they're very professional uh, for the roofing part of it. Um, and, and I know that the that ESSER contractors, uh, again, I, you know, they can put up temporary barriers, but also tend to clean up after themselves and stuff so much. So um, got, they got, they've got a lot of eyes on them, that's right. for sure. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Absolutely. Dr. Trump. First of all, I want to thank you for all your hard work and all the late nights and all the weekends and probably the late and the nights you've lost sleep because I know it's not easy for you trying to keep all of this. And uh, my, my worry right now is that uh, the second year anniversary is coming up and, and parents and students and have expectations of having something done. 
and I'm, I'm so glad when I hear you say that uh, we're moving along and Upper Lakai should get some words soon. And, um, and I, we have to realize that uh, Upper Lakai was told that they were gonna be demolished soon after the storm. And it's been almost two years we're waiting for that FEMA approval. Uh, Ellen, uh, Grand Kaya, uh, Ellen does been, no, Grand Kaya came in next. Well, we decided that what last fall, we're about a year in at Grand Kaya and about a few months, six months in at, at Ellenda. So the timeline is long and it's very frustrating. And I understand uh, how all the schools and all the parents and, and stakeholders feel. Uh, I'm, I'm excited that finally, after the almost two long years, we're getting some good news on Upper Lokai, finally. But I want you and your staff and the people that work with you to realize we how much we appreciate what y'all do. Oh, thank you. And it's been great working with y'all. It's the FEMA process. Everyone who has come to these schools from the FEMA side, they understand that's why they're rushing. They see the damage when they drive down both the bayous. They see it not just at the schools, everywhere else. Um, they have the rec districts. They're all working with all of them. The fire stations, they see the damage. They're trying to push it through. They have whole new teams that came in in May to try to expedite this whole process. They have an office now in Raceland to address our area. So FEMA is kind of pushing now because they're also seeing what's the delay of everything. So it's, we're expecting to see a lot more movement coming from them. Uh, next month will not be an easy one for nope. people who sit on the board in the Bayou Parishes, let me tell you, on the, mm -hmm. in the Bayou Districts. It's not going to be uh, it's not going to be easy for us next month when that second anniversary comes by. But we will hold uh, the line and we will do our best to to help our constituents understand how hard you guys are working and that we are getting there. Yep, appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions for Adam or for Ryan? I don't know if Ryan was finished. We're good. <laughs> All right. Number 14, matter bearing upon Hurricane Ida response, and that would be Mr. Curtis Lee. I'm smiling because Adam said he doesn't know how to come behind the grass cover. <laughs> and I, I couldn't help but think, and I'm going to go off script for just a second. Um, when uh, Dr. Trejo was talking about next month, that um, that's going to be emotional, as she said, for people down the bayou. And in listening to the dialogue here this evening, outside of the reports and the hard work that we all put in, I think the best thing that we all can have is some empathy. Because when you work in the disaster area that we're all patient and passionate about, when these natural disasters hit, these are things that we can't do anything about, right? And so our heart goes out to people who have been uh, experiencing events that they didn't ask for and that they didn't deserve. And so the empathy and the patience is really all that we can do as we all collectively work through this process. And I just wanted to throw that out there because um, all of us are working hard, but we haven't truly been working on this for two years because our contract didn't start at the two year mark get started after that and so um, you know we just we want to continue to push when and where we can with that being said um, we do have some architects that are going to speak on some of our schools about seven of the facilities tonight as well so we're going to try to report on some things that won't be redundant um, we are working with the entire staff, <clears throat> what I call the TPSD task force that we meet with on a weekly basis, the contractors, the principals, the school teachers that are getting ready and eager to move back in, uh, the architects alike, uh, to try to coordinate with both of these projects, both the hurricane repair as well as the, the other uh, ESSER repairs as well, to do everything we can to be ready for August and at least to plan and prepare for those things um, but we are announcing 10 contracts, and those 10 are Bayou Black, Broadmoor, Du Large, um, HLB, Grand Caillou Middle, and then we have South Terrebonne High and the TPSD Administrative and Transportation um, and Support Buildings. And we have an additional uh, couple facilities that are coming on. I 
think Montague Middle and Elementary we're just waiting for the documents which the architects uh, is not on this schedule for tonight so I'm just going to speak about this briefly that will be uh, that contractor will be signing those documents and then getting those back to us and then of course we will be scheduling a pre-construction kickoff meeting to bring two more under uh, contract and to get started with those repairs um, as it was touched on briefly uh, earlier tonight um, we do have one that we're moving in the documents that you have over to uh, the occupancy side. Um, it had the least amount of damage. Um, it was all exterior repairs, and that was Grand Caillou Middle. Uh, the architect announced that it, you know, had the substantial completion walk, and so we're working through those punch lists, and that one will be ready uh, before school. And <clears throat> outside of that, uh, Bayou Black. Broadmoor, they're moving well. Um, you know, we've had some setbacks that were outside of the plans that we didn't anticipate with additional abatement, uh, but we do have some good progress on that to report, and it's continuing to go that direction. We're really pleased with our two high schools, um, not the grass, but but the work that's being done at HL Bourgeois and at South Terrebonne High, and. Um, right now in some cases those contractors are either on schedule or slightly ahead of schedule i say that reluctantly <coughs> and hopefully it will stay that way but we, we're managing those processes and they've been a pleasure to work with on the two high schools and uh, there'll be some more details that'll come out of this meeting later on tonight so i'm going to stop at this point and open it up to you guys if you have any questions for me and i'll be glad to step back up to the podium if needed uh, mr d hart Pick on your first. Yes, sir. You said y'all haven't had a contract for two years. How long is y'all contract you have with us now? How it's long? a it's a twenty four month. Twenty four month. Yes, sir. So how long you been into the contract? Uh, I'm just trying to get information. Yes, sir. Since January of twenty twenty two is okay. my understanding. Well, we're just staying on fast track because I'm telling you, I'm going to be whenever the time for renewal, if it comes to that, I'll be considered on the progress we make. I understand. And I'll say that about the whole group. Yes, sir. both groups, and I'm not trying to itemize one versus the other. It's just that we need things to get moving. That, that's why whenever we first started putting all of these project managers together and all the architects together, we had the resources that I thought it would take to get the job done. And I know FEMA is always slow, so I'm not putting all the blame on y'all. FEMA is really was holding up things. But before I renew a contract with any of this, I'm going to consider the progress that's being made. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. One of the things that I would like to say, just for the record for that, is we have um, the FEMA process that uh, Ross South spoke to. We've identified, you know, the scope of work. And we do, uh, along with the contractors and the architects, have a lot of motivation to move quickly on those things. But we are working with them in those guidelines to make sure that you guys can be reimbursed. The, the the new gym at or the gym at South Turbone, I see that there's a lot of work going on there. Yes. Um, are we ahead of schedule, on schedule? Can yeah, you we're, talk we're about on that? schedule. Yes, sir. And on I can give you guys some specific details, but I mean, all the brick and the block work outside has been done and sealed. Uh, they've been working on putting on the uh, roofing deck, and I don't want to get ahead of anything that we've spoken about tonight. Uh, they've been removing the bleachers and the floors on the interior, so they've got you know both both sides of that cranking and going right now to to make some very good progress on that and that particular contractor has some means and methods that we believe even in the future portions of the schedule may help us with some expedition okay very good um broadmoor what, what are we doing at broadmoor that's one of your schools is that something that we're doing inside too we are okay flooring and some abatement because i pass by there somewhat often i don't live in that area but I passed there. Okay, it's just to see the exterior. You know, broke, still have so many schools, I guess, with plywood and and stuff. That it's just I'm hoping is that going to be at least changed out before school starts, or are we going to start with plywood still? Yeah. Front more Montague Middle. You know, again the front doors. You know, plywood is just. On the two. Just those little things, I think, can make a big difference to the communities. You know, even though 
you know, if, if we got to total some of that, you know, tear some of those windows down, I understand. But if it's just, uh, hopefully it's not a FEMA thing, but where we can just make a few little cosmetic things before school starts, I think it would make a big difference to people in the community. Yes. So that, that's kind of what I'm asking there is just some of the eyesores that we're seeing, not knowing exactly how far we're going with it. And those plywood windows, look they just horrible looking. Like you said, for two years, you know, so. So we'll find out about uh, the plywood on Broadmoor because we do have both, yeah, you know, contracts enough. working there. Yeah. And um, I know with the HVAC, and I'm speaking out of turn because that's not my project, but I know once that comes online, they're going to have that building envelope sealed in order for that to work. I do know that much about HVAC. On the two Montagues, those, again, are the ones I spoke about. They're, they're not fully executed yet because we're waiting on that contractor to sign and send those documents back but we anticipate having that back and getting kicked off we're, we're, we're anticipating the 27th or 28th of this month so sometimes towards the middle or end of, of next week okay appreciate it any other board members yes mr harding yeah i know that we all want to get these projects uh on the road uh, i think i'm like everybody here and i think uh you know, I don't know the full grasp of all the in and out of it, but I mean, if if it was as simple as, as having two hundred million dollars and going out and fixing these buildings, we'd have been long gone. But there's complications, there's processes, and things that you have to go through. So I think that when we talk about looking at doing certain things, we need to take everything in consideration. Well, uh, what these uh, two uh, project managers going through and uh, you know I spoke to uh, both of them and they, and they are frustrated that it's not going as fast as it would like to go so I just think that we need to just I'm not lobbying for them I just think that uh, I just think that we take into consideration that whether you had them or somebody else or somebody else or doing ourselves we would still have all these problems that we're dealing with it wouldn't have been it wouldn't made any difference I think that both these companies are, and I think we all did our research, they're very professional. I think they have been doing it a long time, and I think uh, they know they know their job. So that just be, you know, be, try to be patient. I mean, I know sometimes patient runs out, our constituents won't hear patient, but they don't know the full story. So that's why it's left up for, for us to tell them exactly the whole story of what's going on. Thank you, sir. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Blodgett? Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Hamlin. Mr. Harding, thank you for uh, those comments because yeah, I've been sitting here biting my lip because I know the frustrations and uh, that that, uh, that we all face. But the FEMA rules and regulations, like, like Greg said, are very complicated and very precise and very detailed. If you make a mistake when you submit something to them, it... The, the whole thing could get kicked back. Am I correct? And Adam, am I correct? The whole thing. These guys have to be as accurate and as precise as they can be before they submit one item to FEMA. All right? And then once they do, then it's up to, then FEMA takes their time to review it in very in-depth details. If you try to leapfrog FEMA, like somebody, uh, Dane, I think you suggested the, uh, if we could just fix the doors, that could jeopardize that whole school. Because, you know, it seems like we could do that. But look at what happened in another parish. I don't want to call out that parish. But they did. They leapfrog some of the FEMA rules. And they're still not rebuilt. Um, if anybody is to blame, you know, we need to take our frustrations out on Washington, D.C., FEMA, okay? And yeah, I've, I've talked to let the, 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 our congressman about it, and they're working on it up there, but FEMA is the one that makes that decision. And they, they make it in 
on their calendar and on their time. Um, I don't think our project managers or our uh, FEMA consultants are the ones that we should take our frustrations on. That's all I got to say. Just to clarify, I wasn't frustrated I, with I that know. process and I wasn't trying to go around FEMA. That's why I'd ask, where are we with these two schools? Because I know the community would like to see some windows. So just making sure you understand where I'm coming from. And I I'm not, you know, I definitely understand the whole FEMA thing. And I think we're all frustrated with that as well as Adam. But we're going to get it all done, right? If anybody can do it, Adam will with Adam can do Superman, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ford. I think the biggest problem we're having here, we're all facing, we're feeling the pressure from the public, not just us as a board, or the people that we've hired to help us with this. And I'm going to say the thing that everyone wants to say, but nobody's going to say it. Sometimes the public's expectation is a little bit unrealistic. Okay, so yes, I want us to have the best schools in the area. In fact, January 22nd, 2021 I submitted a, an agenda item request for the February 2021 board meeting to do a beautification project around the district because at that time we had a capital projects committee that was meeting and discussing which schools were coming up next or what was going to be you know upgraded and here we are two years later over two years later and we're bickering or we're we're dealing with a situation that we weren't asked for, like you said, and none of us deserved it, especially not our constituencies, but we're doing the best we can. You guys are doing the best you can. We as a board of nine individuals in the community are doing the best we can. I just think sometimes the public's expectation is a little unrealistic. So, you know, the silver lining in this, like I, I was having this discussion with Mr. Ogeron, the silver lining is, we're getting new schools. You know, two years ago, I just wanted to get some paint on some schools and, you know, upgrades here and there. And we're getting new schools. People, be thankful. God bless Homa. God bless Terrebonne. I mean, this is this is what gets me frustrated and worked up. It's because, you know, I grew up in a crappy two and a half bedroom trailer where I could hear squirrels walking around at night and I could hear raccoons and other things crawling through my HVAC system and you know while I was trying to sleep and now I live in a big beautiful 27 square foot house 2700 square foot house you know because I worked my butt off to get there and look I'm not it's not to say anything bad about the people in this community but most of them they're kind of waiting around for someone to hey Give us something. Do something. You know, you want to be a part of the solution? Get in touch with somebody. Come help us clean up these schoolhouses. Come help us put some paint on the walls. Maybe do something nice around your community. You know, and you don't like what I got to say, public? Call me up. 985-665-3288. Seriously. We're doing the best we can. Give us some credit. You know, let's get this. Let's. Let's keep pushing, and I'm sorry that I'm doing this during uh, AGI's, you know, presentation, but it's something that needs to be said. And I looked on this agenda two or three times, and I couldn't figure out a better place to say it because it's time that it's been it's it's been said. You know, uh, these schools are moving along. You guys are working, and look, at the end of the day, we're going to have new schools, or at least refurbished schools, newer area HVAC system, better places for our students to learn. To, uh, to go and to gather and you know maybe we're creating sanctuaries my high school Terrebonne High was a sanctuary for me you know and that's what I'm hoping that I can do for these other kids of this community so the silver lining is yes we had to deal with a hurricane but guess what we're getting some new schools so be grateful thank you Mr. DeHart yes sir I promise you be very brief I'm not trying to attack everybody that's involved in this process but that's over 30 something years, not because I've been on that school board. Before this school board I served, I've dealt with FEMA for re recreations that I work for. And I'm telling you right now, what bothers me, uh, yeah, Washington, D.C., legislators, they're the ones who control FEMA and, and make the rules, and FEMA carries them out and then goes works on it. I am very familiar with that. I'm not no expert in that process. But what I'm trying to say to you is that right now, no matter 
who's got to say what? Two of the recreations that I know in this parish, six or seven years later, they hold, you know, they hold money, they don't give you the full amount, and all the documentation's been approved, and then they're asking for, uh, they, they overpaid you. So I'm very familiar with the rules, and I don't want to break any rules because I don't want to be left holding the bag, but at the same time, I have quite a good bit of experience, and it's nothing to brag about, and it's nothing to complain about. It's just that this process has been going on, and I'm just saying, that's why I mentioned DC. It's not anything different. It's just that the legislators is trying to see how it can work better. And that's, that's the only comment I'm trying to make about the legislators in DC. But still, all of the rules that FEMA have, I'm the first one to say we've got to follow every one of them. So I'm not here trying to point the finger just at you know, project managers or any architects or, or staff, anybody. It's just that whenever they hold 20% of your money, that's millions of dollars. And all I'm saying is that we don't have a bank, uh, a, a money tree to where we have all kind of funding. And anytime you borrow money, you've got to pay interest on it. So that's that's added to the plate. So that's what I'm trying to say to you. And maybe if my remarks were a little bit harsh, I didn't mean it that way. But I just want to clarify what I said, Mr. Chairman. And I'm, I'm done. And like I say, I just want to clear the air to make sure I didn't send the wrong message with my comments. But I'm just saying we got so much need help. That's why I said let's put things and knock that door down. Take it off the hinges. <laughs> well, Mr. Dior, as I take my seat, uh, thank you for that clarification. We don't, we don't feel offended at all. And I'm going to speak on behalf of uh, – Volker, because you know the construction project managers. I think we all share the same mission, and we understand that um, you know our goal is the shared goal you guys have, which is by the time we get to our fall uh, determination, we want to have as many schools under construction because that is beneficial, beneficial for the students, the constituents, you guys, the board, and us alike. Thank you, thank you, Miss Benoit. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd just like to follow up on another point, um, kind of what um, Mr. Hamner brought up. And Adam, it, it's really a question for you um, to come back here. One of the things that that uh, you indicated, and, and we all knew from the very beginning, that it, you have to be very careful when you package something to submit to FEMA that you're dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's, because you don't want it rejected and going back and forth many times. Um, it just causes further delays. Has there ever been anything thus far that the architects have recommended and you have packaged that has been questioned or refused by FEMA? So there's some things that we'd have to get further clarification on. Um, the good thing with FEMA is if you have a licensed architect that puts a stamp on it, they majority of the time go with it um, as long as could, that the architects are taking the liability of it um, sometimes we've had to make a change in a process and we had to restart the whole process from the beginning to to get back to where we were it's a quick review but one little change can restart the whole process um, so we've had stuff but it's nothing been nothing's been major yet so good case in point then and that's that's my point is that that's what says to us, or should say to us in the public, that we're doing a really good job of being very careful of mm -hmm. what we put forth to FEMA so that we don't have these delays, yep. right? Yes, and then so for Upper Little Cuyahoga and Grand Cuyahoga as an example, um, we when they came for the site visit in October, we gave them the breakdown that the architect provided. Uh, the people who are viewing were like, this is, exactly what we needed this is what cause a lot of people come they think oh one of the uh, floor tile is damaged we need to replace the whole floor and so it kind of sets a precedence for all your schools that you're just trying to get a whole new school out of it right. and the ones we did for upload kai and grand kai which were pretty devastated in themselves we weren't claiming the whole thing um they took that and they were like we can trust now the process that if this is what you're doing for all of them it'll be easy throughout the rest of it. Um, so we, they commended the architects at that point, and we have had no major issues moving forward because a lot of it's been clarification and um, just trying to back up and validate whatever we're claiming, which you've had not had anything removed at this point yet. Yeah. 
Well, well that, that just clarifies to me that y'all are doing everything that you need to be doing and you're doing it right. And that's why we haven't had any further delays. And the delays that we have are just a matter of continuing okay. to, pre to uh, package things in a manner that is going to be eventually accepted by FEMA. Right? Yeah, and we have all software with other clients and we have other 50% rules. I think we're furthest along throughout all our clients on Apolokai and Grand Caillou. I think we're the closest to where we are, so it's looking good across this um, disaster in itself. Good. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, uh, you said it. Uh, <laughs> just one, one final point. Uh, it's not a question, but uh, again, Dr. Kamendanam, thank you for doing that. And look, there's been, there's been frustration between the architects and Adam, probably, because Adam's always requesting and demanding, and why do we have to, and it's a back and forth, and what do you call it, comments, architects have to give comments, because you give them mm -hmm. recommendations, they gotta redo things. It's been a, process, a back and forth, thorough. But at the end of the day, what he said is that FEMA trusts our process. I think that's big, mm -hmm. that's yeah, huge. Big uh, yeah. And I think in other places, that might not be the case. You kind of alluded to that, Mr. Hamner, and uh, they all of a sudden put up red flags and they, they, they go through it even more thoroughly than what they may be reviewing our stuff. So it could lengthen the process as much as we're doing on the front end, it would lengthen it more on the back end if we weren't doing all this front end work. So yep. uh, architects, thank you guys for all that you all have done, project managers and, 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 and also, it's, it's a process. And, and our, our people as well, We've, we have, you know, staff that are equally as involved in, in a lot of that stuff. So it's it's really demanding, and uh, we understand the frustration because we're frustrated as well. Yeah. I we would have I would have if I would have known better we would have called for demolition. How many times I've actually demoli de demolish buildings? Like every and month, pretty much where we are. It's, it's it could not be paid for or jeopardize the whole project. So we've got to kind of catch ourselves, slow up, back yeah. up, and just wait. And I agree, wait is this is hard. It's hard. But yeah. We're gonna get it paid for. Well, other than that, it's on our nickel. Yep. That's the, that's the bottom line. And we can see the end of the tunnel right now. It's looking close. Like I said, by the end of this fall is what we're expecting right now. So. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. All right. Were you finished, Mr. Curtis Lee? All right. Good. Unless y'all had any other questions. Let the other Thank guy you, get sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate your time, both of you guys. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Merlin Lee Red. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wazan. Well, that's y'all heard some discussion. You know, we did four Grand Cayet Middle and South Down are substantially complete. Uh, South Terrebonne, the gymnasium is in full blown construction right now. They've taken all the roof, the top roof off, the high roof. They've started putting the panels down. All the, the substructure roof is down. Closing it in, the uh, environmental contractor is uh, wrapping up the inside work that they've been doing. They're getting ready to start changing out the air conditioners. All of the air conditioners have been defreon so they can move them out the way, uh, so so the new ones can be you know come in and get start getting everything reconditioned per se. You know, so uh, the building is getting to the point where it's getting closed up completely. You know, so. Uh, it's the Thompson is doing a fantastic job of expediting that work. You know, it's pretty, and they, they're working on the lower roofs too, adding extra purlins on the areas that need to for the wind conditions on that. Uh, so it's, it's moving along rather fast, you know, rather good. And then we're finalizing the final documents for the main building to come out for bid next month or so. So well, that's, that's right around the corner. We'll have that one out for bid. That's going to be. <coughs> Estimated, I mean, right now, probably 13 to 18 million dollar project. You know, it's going to be a major renovation to the roof systems. You know, that's the biggest, biggest part. And with the interior work that got damaged from the from the rain, you know, a lot of door work, well, wall work. Uh, we have a consultant coming in Thursday morning to look at the the final uh, of how to repatch the, the plaster walls, and because all those interior walls in the main building are plaster. Uh, so there's some special techniques to do in that and we look at a couple different options but we got a guy coming in from New Orleans that does a lot of that work in New Orleans on Thursday morning to give us a, uh, his recommendation on that so you mentioned the roof if you don't mind uh, before mm -hmm. I forget it, are we going back with a flat roof or is there going to be a slope to that 
No, it's going to go back with a flat roof, but uh, we're looking at changing the metal deck on the main building also, you know, the, the flat roof. We looked at a couple options on that, and it, it would be a lot more expensive from that, so it, compensation would have to come from the board for, to doing that. And they had some, the way the auditorium is set up on that one particular end, and then the gymnasium on the other end, it brought in a lot of complications to try to, I mean, you'd have, you'd have had by the time you did all that you'd have had a lot higher peak roof than what you really you know right. you know so so we're going but we're going back with a different system on the that was that system that was built 62 63 uh, they now have a it's a lightweight system with the insulation that is actually applied and the lightweight is poured on top of it originally the lightweight was poured on the metal deck then they put the insulation on top of it so I've been working with a contractor out of Houston, Nettles Construction. That's a they're one of two companies in the country that really do this kind of work, and uh, they they work with me on determining the slopes. I mean, there's gonna be a slope to the roof. It's gonna it's it's flat, but it's gonna slope to the drain and things like that. So I think the build up on the end on the edges of the roof is anywhere from eight to ten inches from what it is now. So we're gonna have some, a better slope than what we had before, and utilizing the roof drains that are there now. So. Uh, Harding. Okay. Two questions, Mr. Lee. One, do you have a, a finish date, uh, a approximate finish date with that uh, that gym? Because I know we, I know the, 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 the dates were floating around different times. I mean, so well, right now the contract date I think is December twenty fourth. Yeah. I'm not mistaken. I think it's the final. I think it's the middle. That's right around. It's either the twenty fourth or the twenty fifth in terms of the contract days and when they started with the notice to proceed. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, and we we we've got we we going back with an original wood floor system like they had in there before. We right. just finalize all the graphics with the uh, with the supply of that. Uh, okay. In fact, I just sent the we had a, gone through a couple of reviews with the graphics on the floor, okay. and we I sent that this week to Miss Gotro to finalize that with her. But, so. but my last question to you is this, and, and you've been around a while. I think uh, a while back, I think this board had decided if if you if we go with something new or different, that we wasn't building flat roofs because of all the rain that we got in South Louisiana. So now you're saying that this is a different type of roof that's going to be able to accommodate the reason why we didn't want to go with, go with flat roofs? Well, you talking about on the main building? Yes, sir. Well, well I, mean, I mean, I'm talking about the building you're talking about, not the gym. I mean, yeah, well, the gym, the gym right now we're going with the gym. We actually we do we're going with a metal roof on the gym. They had a modified bitumen roof on there, this, the, but the slope of the gym was actually built. The structure was built with the slope initially. You know, it was a light, slight slope, but it was built enough to where we could put a metal roof on it. So when we did it, we took an uh, alternate bid to go. You know, I I priced in a metal building in the cost estimates that we did for FEMA. And you know, there was some question about it, so we decided, well, let's take an alternate and see it. If we'd have gone back with the original style roof, the low bid contract was actually ten thousand dollars more to do that. So we saved ten thousand on his bid by going with the metal roof, which to me is a, you know, it, the structure was there. We didn't have to do any kind of thing else. We just replaced one material to another material. We didn't have to build any structure right. okay. on the main building. We'd have to build an excessive amount of structure to maintain or try to put. A metal slope on the right. roof on that so, one. So, so you basically satisfied with with that with that model or with, with, the, with the material that you actually using in reference to? Because you see, you got a slope on. I assume so it'll, it'll drain. I'm oh yes, sir. Yeah, no, it, that's yeah, what I'm right. talking about. The property is going to properly drain because of that's you know, correct. South right, Louisiana, right, that's what, right. Okay. And I'm talking about just the high roof, the lower roofs around the gym already had metal roofs on there. And we're going okay. back with metal on that. All right, thank you. Yeah, brother. yes, sir. Any other board members? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Miss Shelley. Good evening. I want to talk about Acadian Elementary first. That repair project's going very well. Laparouse Metalworks and Foray Group are excellent contractors. They have good communication and good project management. And I'm very satisfied with what we're seeing so far. <clears throat> so all the metal roofs and wall panels are repaired. Just a few miscellaneous downspouts need to be installed. And as a reminder, we organized this repair project into five phases. Phase one, which includes the administration area, kitchen, cafeteria, 
and portable building will be ready for occupancy on <clears throat> excuse me July 25th the portable portable building will be about um, a week later so including in that phase is new flooring wall base ceilings light fixtures and reinstallation of chill water piping where indicated on our drawings the portable building in the back um, which FEMA deemed you know wasn't couldn't be demolished but they were willing to pay you know a fortune to repair it um, we're gonna have that prepped and ready to go and that way uh, Miss Cook will have two classrooms to use as sort of like floating classrooms um, when they're doing work in the other phases they can utilize that portable for that so they'll have mm-hmm Yes, Ms. Cook, the principal over there, is being very cooperative, patient. She's awesome. She's probably the best, best principal to work with in a scenario like this. So that portable building is going to have a repaired roof, new ceiling, new insulation, new light fixtures, new AC units, new subfloor, new, new um, BCT, and wall base. So they'll have that ready for the opening of the school year. The contractor has been working in phase two, which is half of the classrooms in the main building. We already have new floors, light fixtures, re-insulated piping. Um, they are working on repairing the wood walls in the classrooms that had a little bit of water damage found um, at the bottom of the walls. And they are working on cleaning and servicing AC units. The contractor has started the window wall demolition and metal stud installation yesterday. So on that phase, phase two, they're starting with the exterior wall that's between the building and the three portable buildings. Um, though that's the first wall they're going to start with they're going to demo the window walls uh, install the metal studs and we're going to get an idea of how quickly that how quickly that can happen we can kind of judge you know the rest of the scheduling on that throughout the rest of the facility once phase two is complete they're going to move the students back in those rooms and then we're going to go ahead and shift to the other side of the main building um, to repair the other eight classrooms at East Homa, we have several portable buildings that are going to be repaired and up uh, for school use before school starts. At Koto Bay Blue, same thing. We have a few portables that need some repairs that we're hoping to get those up and ready for them for the beginning of school. Um, floor tile and exterior uh, metal soffits at Village East and Koto Bay Blue will be done in the next two weeks. And then at Legion Pork, lots of questions at Legion Pork, right? Legion Pork is, you know, a challenge. But so the mess that you see is going to be cleaned up in the next couple of days. Lapru should um, finish the roof repairs this week. Everything at Legion should be cleaned and repaired before school. At Acadian, everything, all the roof, all the roof work. Uh, wall panel work with the exception of I think just two or three panels and a couple of downspouts all of that's done um, so we're getting a roof on the building we're gonna have the gutters and downspouts ready to go at Legion <clears throat> now during the summer we had to shut down the AC system and do the abatement of the pipe insulation all of the abatement is complete um, now we are starting to do temporary reinstallation until we can get the new system in later on this year. Um, <clears throat> they have, they're about to start on that and they should be finished within two weeks and we're hoping to get the chiller back online by the 27th or before, or Sammy will kill me. <laughs> so uh, while that's happening though, um, starting this Thursday, you'll actually start to see them peel off some of those window walls on the exterior. So we're going to start demoing the exterior walls and we're going to start off on the first floor. And um, the contractor is actually very optimistic that he's going to be able to demo and install metal stud walls on the entire first floor before school starts. I know, I know, fingers crossed. Um, now, that's not to say that the windows are going to be installed and that the finish, you know, fiber cement board is going to be installed. That has to happen later, right? But we're just trying to knock out things 
once we get all of that exterior wall sealed up, then we can have the interior contractor, Cotton, come in, right, and follow them and do the flooring, the ceiling, <clears throat> you know, light fixtures, things of that sort. So we got multiple contractors that we're working with, kind of keeping the ball rolling. <clears throat> and we met actually this morning with the principal and Miss Rose and kind of worked out, you know, a phasing plan and we're limited we're limited the contractor to four classrooms so four classrooms at a time can be shut down and that's it and we're going to stick with that plan once they finish with the first floor they're going to go ahead and go up to the second floor and we're going to go ahead and give them half of the hall like half of the second floor and then knock out that half and then transfer it to the other side the new window windows there when remember we're not doing full height we're just doing the smaller punched punched in windows um that'll be early october they'll be able to start on that fiber c more board that's going to be towards the end of the project because they don't want to beat up or damage the finished product we're looking at a start date of that around January, January, early January, hopefully sooner. Any questions, comments, problems? Mr. Ford? I noticed that they don't have an HVAC company identified on the, um, on this master sheet for Legion Park. Is that because they haven't done the bidding or anything on that yet for the HVAC system? Oh no, they have a mechanical contractor already. It's a uh, Bruce Ord. Bruce Because yeah, it's just not identified on here, and that's what I wanted to know. I, I wanted to see if it was one of the other ones that we're we're already using or not. So, okay. He's not working on any of my other projects. But yeah. Thank you, Mr. Crowdis. I th think he just asked the question that I was going to ask, but uh, I'll ask it anyway just to verify. But um, <laughs> so you mentioned about. Uh, Reinsulating, um, doing some reinsulating of the of the old units, the old HVAC units. We're not. So what what you're doing is we're we're working on the units that were that are already there, making them functional until you can get the new ones in. We're you're not we're not using any kind of rentals or anything like that. Like no sir, AC stuff. no sir. The existing system is going to stay in operation until the new system is installed, okay. and we can do that like transfer. And it seems to be functional. It's, it's right cooling, now, at this moment, well. there is no air conditioning, but that's because they had to um, abate, and then we have to re-insulate. Okay. And we're talking about um, the pipelines that bring the water yeah. to each fan coal unit and each cl each classroom. Those pipes that run down in the halls need to be temporary re-insulated. Right until they can go and install the new system so i guess uh just as a as, as a plan of action you know a lot of times when you shut things down for any length of time you get ready to crank them back up and sometimes things go wrong and it, yep and there's a broken port or something yeah. below yep so i was just kind of thinking you know a lot kind of thinking ahead maybe considering some some rentals for the start of school or kind of considering that in the plan of action Something. absolutely so, yeah. uh, definitely a plan B um, LeBlanc who is the project manager for the company was actually at our meeting this morning and um, we did kind of talk about that as well or just trying to rush getting that chiller back on to see what we're going to be up against okay very good thank you um, staying up for Oakland too because you're next on Oaklawn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, for, for Oaklawn, um, we're about 90% complete with the construction documents. And I'm shooting for um, the first week of August to advertise for bids. Sounds good. Any questions? That's all that's a window project, right? Yes. Windows and walls. And some mechanical demolition that wasn't part of the HVAC scope, the ESSER scope, the other ESSER scope. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Shelley? Yes, Mr. Ford. So, Oakland, you're, you were uh, responsible for the HVAC also, right? No, sir. So that was uh, Thompson, I believe? Uh, no, sir. Uh, CQH was 
Okay, yeah. So uh, that's they're going to come up on Max now. That's all. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mr. Bruce. Mr. Daniel Bruce. Yeah, he was talking to Adam. <laughs> he was arguing with Adam about FEMA. <laughs> I got to redo that again. <laughs> Good evening. Um, Sue, Lakash has already been spoken about, so we'll go through uh, SEC. So with the back and forth we talked about earlier, so SEC, we've, we've done our review, our read comments on SEC, and that percentage went up from 54% to 62% damage. So again, we were discussing maybe renovating and do some different things with SEC. So now that it's increased in damage assessment, uh, maybe we need to take a step back and look at different, another, another path forward for SEC. But all the kids at SEC are, are in buildings. They, they have a place to go to school. It's the main building of SEC that we're talking about here. And then all of the other little cabins at SEC is a lot of, there's one cabin that's out of, uh, out of order completely. There's two, actually two cabins that are out of order. All the rest of them are roof damage and siding damage um, that we need to, to address canopy at a canopy all along those cabins yeah. <clears throat> so um, so it's the main building that we're looking at that's the 60, main building that, that would be eligible or potentially eligible for replacement because gotcha. it's increased in its damage assessment to 62 percent damaged from 54 originally uh, I don't know if y'all want to go one at a time or um, Louis Miller Votek uh, that project in terms of construction documents, we're going to take all of the buildings. So there are several buildings at Lewis Miller Votech that are in a flood zone that we have to redetermine on what exactly we're going to do with them. But we're going to take all of the buildings that are not in a flood zone, and that construction document package is going to be coming up hopefully in the next 30 days. That will be up on the market to, to start addressing those buildings at Lewis Miller Votech. Um, there's like building B, there's some buildings, storage buildings, a couple of different buildings that are uh, in a flood zone that, that are approaching that 50% damage mark that, uh, and it's not the FEMA 50, it's a different, whole different 50% uh, damage mark because they're in a flood zone that we're going to need to pay attention to. Uh, but, and then there's three buildings at Los Melovotech that are, have exceeded the 50% damage mark that have to go through that lengthy FEMA review process to determine final eligibility on basically the demolition and replacement. Uh, the, that's all. And then Honduras. Honduras is going to get lumped in with the, uh, the Lewis Miller Votech first package to get fixed. So that's, again, in the next 30 days or so, that should be coming up on the market. Security, yeah, that's, but that's not a FEMA project. That's a, that's a separate project. So uh, they they have they're waiting on fabric still. That was supposed to come in, I think, last Friday. Uh, they should have fabric stretched and installed at Oak Lawn, at Elysian Fields, and at Broadmoor by the beginning of school, and then they'll have uh, Acadian and Honduras uh, that they might be struggling to finish before the beginning so they do have until I think it's mid-September by contract to complete that but they're going to try to get all those wrapped up as soon as possible the, the Oakland fencing yeah, we decided to move it in some yes. I guess okay because I saw that um, I think we all of us turning area right right so that's and that's all going to be from the building out, right? yes uh, okay yeah, so the bus will, right now, they have to go open and close that gate in the morning. So right. we basically are realigned that security perimeter to where the buses can come in and out without having to worry about that gate. That should, that should have been thought of a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Makes sense. So very good. Any, uh, yes, Mr. Ford. Actually, I have two questions. The first one I'm going to go with is Broadmoor because I know that you're the point person for that. When we talked <clears> about doing this fencing. There were some questions about the tennis courts and how they were being utilized before and the basketball courts utilized by the public. Um, Broadmoor is one of those schools that's, that's in a, a rather small community. And a lot of people in the community 
utilize the basketball courts, utilize the tennis courts. And in fact, Rec 2-3 has agreed to help us uh, do some improvements on those tennis courts and basketball courts as long as they're accessible to the public. Uh, and of course, that would remain after hours, not during school hours, of course. So what I wanna make sure is when we're finishing up the Broadmoor project, that we're putting in place some sort of way for either our custodial staff or someone to go there and open up the basketball court and tennis court for the public after hours. And then of course, when school's going on, school's in session to have those places closed. So we had talked about that before and I don't know what kind of solution you guys came up with. So our, our project doesn't deal with those fencing areas. We tying into the corner of the tennis court mm -hmm. and going toward the baseball fields. Mm -hmm. Um, those tennis courts and all that was damaged. That was that would be. I don't know if Houston is Houston still here. They were addressing that tour with their Broadmoor project or not. Um, but that wasn't part of the security project. Let's put it that way, as simply as it can be stated. So, so, so that would be someone else's. We can do it if y'all want me to. But. No. So on the project that you guys have, you're securing and you're you're securing all the area with the exception of the basketball court and tennis courts. Correct. Is that, okay. We're well, going from the tennis court to the baseball field. So there's a fence there with a mm -hmm. with a, a gate for accessibility by lawn cut. I've seen the and then, a, <laughs> and then a, a personnel gate to allow you know the general public. And again, that's something that's going to have to be coordinated with Rec Two Three because have baseball so they'll probably want to like do a double locking system that they can go and padlock the gate while they have t-ball games and ball games going on and secure those back but during school hours the intent is that the yard that back play area is inside of a fenced area and secure and then where the tennis courts are and the basketball courts are that needs to be redeveloped inside of a fence inside of a security perimeter Okay, so my follow-up question, and it may be for you, it may be for Adam. Uh, Lewis Miller Technical Center, TCT. Those buildings that are collectively over the 50% mark, in theory, with FEMA, is it possible to combine those when we do the rebuild to have one larger building rather than three separate buildings because that's one of the things that they're asking for improved project yeah you could it'd be considered an improved project it would cap maybe adam you know you you explain that yeah so the three buildings that we're talking about are pretty much three portable buildings so the relatively small classrooms that are outside the main buildings um that are the fema 50 percent one so in theory you could collect them combine them to one uh, building just to serve them. I don't know at the MNO, no, NOP, no. Yeah, the classroom. So depending where they're on the campus, if it's doable, um, you just have to watch where you're gonna put them because the campus is oddly in floodplain and not in a floodplain. I think that's what he was mentioning that some of them aren't 50. So it'll fall in the situation of cash where you can't do repairs or you can do repair just having to play with the 50 percent and that's what we're trying to figure out right now which way to go and how to help it to recover as quick as possible well just as a uh, you know food for thought if it if it comes down to it maybe consider putting those three square footages into one building that's not in the floodplain so it's you know less likely to yeah. give us problems in the future yeah, and like like we said, we haven't flooded in any of those buildings, so we've been lucky with that. Um, but it, you're taking a cap money, so whatever FEMA gives you now, that's it, and you're not you can't come back and ask for more, which is opposite from others. But that would be that is a option if the district move, likes to move forward with that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so Building L is the one that's not in a flood zone. The other two are are older, 1973-ish wood elevated structures that are, are in a flood zone so the so the, the the short answer is is that 
those build the value of those buildings, the cash value of those buildings are pretty much negligible because it's been they've been depreciated out over time. So, yeah. so the, you you would have to. And then two of those are classroom buildings. So for for uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. One is I think a small engine shop classroom building, and the other one is. I think uh, oil and gas. It was. It was. I don't know if y'all still even had that program or not. But it was like an oil and gas. That's what it is on the on the site plan. So this is the one the flooring is <coughs> falling in. Uh, That's probably building O. That like the whole roof was gone. So. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? It's uh, we've been fortunate so far. We got Ellender and South Tarbone in time for school. We'll have LaCage in time for school, and then we're going to start working on Acadian to replace the modular building that's being demoed over the summer. Hopefully, we'll try to get that right toward the beginning. It's it's, it's we're kind of behind the, the, the eight ball on that one, but because of some you know the other other issues y'all had, but we're going to try to get that new building back on campus and ready as soon as we can so that they'll have that eight classroom uh, modular building ready, hopefully January-ish, February-ish. Okay. So. All right. Thank you, sir. So they can stop playing uh, musical chairs in the. Chairs. Yeah. Yes. We're going to play that for a while. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks. Mr. Frank Thompson. Uh, I'm going to go over the, the ESSER projects. Yeah. So we can start with Do Large. Do Large is a lot like um, Legion, where we have an existing chill water system there. And, you know, we stripped off the insulation because of asbestos. So it had to be stripped, re insulated with temporary. It's going to be in place until the new system comes online. So that one, unfortunately, when they started filling it back up, sprung leaks. It started with eight leaks. They patched it. Um, you know, we told them to get it back, and, and they patched eight leaks. Eight more popped up. And at the end of the day, it was 22 leaks they had to repair. We have to have this piping to give the kids AC for when school comes around. It's the only AC we have until our new system comes online. So that, unfortunately, will be a change order that uh, and it's in the neighborhood of 18 to 22,000. But it's a necessary evil that we have no choice but to do. Um, so we have to get the AC back online. It has pressure. It's running. They're fixing to start the chillers back up. So that system is online. So it's going. Kids will have AC when school starts. The new construction making very good progress. Uh, all the work in the corridors, the new AC duct for the fresh air, all the refrigerant piping, all the drains, uh, everything in the corridor is done. They're going to start Monday installing the ceiling grid back in, a new ceiling grid with new uh, ceiling tiles, new lights. All that's going to start on Monday, will be done next week. It'll all be in place for when the, the kids come back to school. Uh, then after that, they have the cassettes to do the classrooms. These are the indoor AC units. They're going to start doing uh, probably after school starts because we're running out of time, three to four at a time. They're going to go in and do it. We've worked out with the principal. She's going to move kids to swing spaces. So we've got a plan to do that. That, that should go off pretty flawlessly from what I see. Is this a do large? Yeah, I do large, yes, sir. At Do Large, uh, the only equipment we're lacking, we can't start the indoor equipment till we get the outside condensing uh, units that power these units. Uh, the condensing units for most of them will be in on 924. And there are a few larger 12 tons that will be in at uh, December 20th for final. But the good news is we have the old chiller system going. That's why we had to get it back up. Uh, they're going to change out the inside portion, you know, three to four classrooms at a time. 
work their way around, have all the inside parts done. When the condensing units come outside, come in, they're gonna be outside, uh, install them, charge the system, and start it up. Then we're gonna demo out the old chill water system. So everything's going according to plan. Uh, the, the delivery dates for the condensing units, unfortunately, did slide back a little bit, but that's just the, the times we're in right now. So we have an operational system, so the kids will not suffer from not having AC. So um, any questions on new large? I think that one's going pretty well other than the leaks, but the when they removed the insulation from doing the abatement, which we had to do, we had no choice the pipes were so deteriorated that it created leaks. And then, so just wanted Any you questions? guys to understand that we may, we will have a change order for that item and, and there was no avoidance. Okay. Um, moving on to Mulberry, if there's no questions on Dew Large. Mulberry is actually a little further ahead. <clears throat> uh, Mulberry, we have all the classroom, all the works done in the corridors all the duct work, all the units that serve the corridor. Um, they're gonna start putting in on Monday the new ceilings and lights. So that'll all be done so the kids can walk safely in and out. Uh, the classrooms, we have it divided up into eight zones along the outside and four zones in the interior. All eight zones on the exterior have the new uh, units installed in the classroom. This just means that we're not going to have to go in that classroom to do work once the kids are in there. Um, half the school has AC units that are independent to each classroom that will still be online. Uh, so we don't have to knock out their AC. They have AC. It's on, you know, pretty much 60% of the classroom. Some of the older part has AC units that are coming offline that were in the corridors. We have the contractor has in zones three and four, half of those. He's on his nickel uh, for good faith. He is providing temporary AC for us in those classrooms because it's where the pre-K or K is and the uh, principal said she needed it. So he stepped up and said, at no cost, I will, I'll take care of this for the kids. Uh, so there will be two to four classrooms in zone, the other zones that won't have AC until we get it all online. Again, it's on the same path. We have condensing units coming in, the majority on 924 and the rest on 1220. So, you know, we're gonna be in that situation with AC everywhere except for a few classrooms, which she said she can live with. Uh, if not, we're having a meeting tomorrow on all these schools. On, uh, so if they say they can't, we'll come up with a work with the school system to get some windy units or something in there if we have to. We'll do what we need to do to get the kids in there. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, we will absolutely do what, you know, we, we have enough time to where we're meeting in the morning. If, if she says, I, I've looked at it, I need one of those classrooms too, we'll, we'll get windy units, we'll do something to where the kids will have AC. Um, any questions on Mulberry? It's, it's going very, very well, in my opinion. So no hiccups uh, that I know of there. Going to HL Bourgeois. Uh, that one's making a lot of progress. Uh, the classrooms, all the work in the classrooms, 100% done. Uh, ceilings are going back up. Remember, there is another project going there also, which is the Ida project. But as far as my pro project, the work in the classrooms are all done. Ceilings back in. The two units serving the cafeteria and the dining's all in. It's all installed. Uh, they should have it online very shortly, within a week. Uh, the ceilings are all back in in the corridors, except for I'm having them replaced, and it was part of the job. This is nothing extra, but they had a, a section of bad insulation coming from where the mechanical room is going across the main hall. And it was, if you look in there, it's got a big drip line. It's been leaking for years and years, so we went ahead and fixed it in this project. They still need to do that, and then that uh, ceiling will be in. So when the kids come back, all ceilings in, all the lights, everything will be back in. Uh, we will be waiting. All the boilers have been installed. New boilers have been changed out. Uh, they said within a week those should be functional. The 
chillers have not come you know they won't be here until sometime in october we do have temporary chillers on site so chill water will not be an issue we will have it until the new chillers come online we've built the yard they're going to start the brickwork and fence work within a week um, let's see then we have the big air handlers for the classrooms those are going to be i think he said in november when those are going to arrive yeah uh january i'm sorry those got pushed back till january so the plan with those are we, we have ac units that are there we're going to do those swap outs we're going to work with the school system they said it's going to take three days apiece to swap those out so he's going to do it during a long weekend if we can get it if there's a teacher's uh, conference or something if we have a three-day window we're going to pick those and knock those out and get those out the way uh, then the only ones left will be in the auditorium which those will arrive on 11 16 there's two in the auditorium that need to be done so we'll we'll do that during some off hours and also the last one will be the one that used to be the old office area which is now the counseling area that one is scheduled to be here in October and we're going to change that out because that one's not real evasive we'll work with the school system to get that one done um, any questions on HL it's it's going uh, relatively well no no real hiccups on that one um, other than we still haven't heard back from Entergy we do have a leaking transformer there that I, I spoke to you guys about they've come out looked at it getting with their folks they haven't given us an answer when they're going to get that replaced because it's you know it's on them for that one Broadmoor is the last one uh, they prepped all the holes they're going to run a lot of stuff in the attic so they're going to be able to do it during school it's all in the attic space there's a flat roof they built a pitched roof above it some time ago so they're going to be able to work up there you know and no one really know they're up there they've uh, going to start the, the equipment's going to be here in 8 to 12 weeks uh, and they're going to really start prepping everything in September so that one's lagging behind because of the equipment's uh, longer leave, you know, those are Mitsubishi, so they're a little bit behind on delivery. So everything's going according to plans. Nothing here that's alarming or anything to let you guys like know. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Okay. Unless I had any board members. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate it. it. You know, listening to all the air, <laughs> air conditioning stuff, it brings back when I was in elementary school, anybody went to LM, our school and there was no AC in your school. Raise your hand. No. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Did you too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I am. But I, you're older than me, so I don't know where you went. Uh, well, you went private school. Oh, wow. All right. Let's not go there. All right. Who's my next one here? Mr. Robert Utley? Is that what we got? All right. How you doing, man? Uh, so I'm with Casanova School with Engineers and Brandon Cortez. Uh, so I'll be giving the, the update on Oak Lawn and Elysian Fields, the HVAC renovations at these schools. Um, so we're at the beginning stages of the project. We issued notice to proceed on June 29th. Um, so basically we're in the submittal review process right now, uh, looking at everything they've submitted. Um, so it looks like um, on both projects, they're looking to start receiving equipment around the October range. So. Right now, um, at Oak Lawn, <clears throat> they're looking at uh, basically abating. They're pouring some concrete pads right now, doing what they can before uh, school starts. Um, and, and that's about you know where they're at uh, at, at, at Oak Lawn. Um, Elysian Fields, they, they felt like they didn't have quite enough time to get started over the summer, so they're going to go ahead and start once they start receiving equipment as well. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure the supplies will be mentioned last time. We're going to get some uh, window units for a leash and field. I think it's the place all, uh, actually being cleaned out in order to the walls today because it, it got hot in the region. So they're going to be taking care of it as far as that goes. Given right. The work is, is that's correct. That's, that's our understanding is they're going to uh, install window units to take care of that temporarily. Yeah, sounds good. 
Mr. Ford? Okay, so that was going to be my question. Was the Legion Fields because Grand Cay Elementary is there, but so just to be clear, they're going to get window units, and those window units are going to stay until the main system is online, and then you guys will come and, and remove That's them correct. So I, I believe at both schools they're looking to get about six classrooms at a time. Hopefully, if they if, if that's available to them, that way they can start, you know, sections at a time. That contractors are figuring three to four weeks per section if they can get those six classrooms at a time that they should be able to uh, move pretty quickly once they start okay thank you Ms. Benmore. yeah so I'm assuming I'm asking the superintendent this I'm assuming that there will be no schools without air conditioning when school starts okay because I mean look the temperatures are ridiculous right now more so than ever. Standard heat speed that we comes up okay. uh, next. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's priority number one right now. Even, okay. Even more so than grass. Right. Exactly. Right. I agree. Okay. Hit a grass. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Mr. Poisson. Well, it was good to see you. <laughs> yes, we will have air conditioning. <laughs> yes, yeah, so of this one. Give us some good news. God help us. Uh, whew, I really don't have nothing to report with all them I know. reporting. <laughs> Where'd you put my things, Andy? You had all that time to prepare. I ought to have a, ought to have a device, huh? You had all that time to prepare. I got one. You know? All right, uh, we had the same thing with uh, weekly meetings with the project managers on the repairs. At South Terrebonne, we added 33 parking spots on the, along the fence of the baseball field to help with the, the, all the sports and the, the new campus that we moved over there to help with all that. West Park building we installed a couple of AC units split units in there it's what oh yeah they, um, John Celestine we had went out with the president prisoners they had it all uh, <laughs> painted <laughs> uh, so we we ran uh, new electrical wiring to service the new units in the weight room. Uh, monitoring the construction of the softball field at Homer Junior High. Uh, attended pre-bid meetings, attended pre-bid uh, openings on several projects. Monitored a little cash, temporary campus. John also told me a while ago he's got half of it already waxed and cleaned it's ready to go he's doing the other one tomorrow and they'll be able to uh, probably start moving stuff in on that yeah um, I want to thank to Sandy and the other secretaries in there that got us through the end of the year closings they did a great job it's a lot to it a lot of people don't realize how much goes into that, but they did a great job in our office. And uh, I just want to thank them for that also. Take a bow, take a bow. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Plessel? No? I think we took care of all of that earlier. <laughs> Not mentioning any name. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. all right. Motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. I second myself. Any public comments? Anything? Okay. Any other board members? Uh, so move, adjourn. Amen.
Vice Chair, Mr. Crowdis is talking right now. <laughs> is here all, as members of the committee. Also, um, uh, our President um, Patron Hein. I remember your name. Uh, Mr. Boisan, uh, Mr. Um, Hamner is also here, uh, and the superintendent staff. Um, we only have one item on the agenda. It's uh, informational, and I'd like to let the superintendent explain this process. Um, it's something that will be um, continued um, throughout the year, and it's something new, but it's going to give us an update on some of the departments and what they're, um, they're doing, and uh, I think it'll be interesting. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so we, we just went through a lot of building, facility, and, and, and for everything from grass cutting to air conditioning. A lot of things going on, right? O outside of the, the main thing, which is academics. Um, so, what we like to do on a regular basis is have our, our departmental updates, supervisors come up and just briefly speak about one of the, the, the priorities happening in their department that are going to affect kids directly. Uh, so tonight we'll start off with, with our chief academic officer, and we're going to try to keep this, we're going to call it message in a minute. So we want to get up there, give one minute updates each, and uh, continue to do this process throughout the year so that we really get a feel of what's happening from, from K-12 all the way all after, so we'll do that in a minute. So with that being said, I'd like to start with the chief academic officer. Sure. Yes, Mr. Rose. And it's not that there's not other things going on. This is, they have chosen this as one of the priorities, the most important thing for now. But we'll hear more each month, right? right. Good evening. Um, before I start my, my message, I wanted to tell you, um, tell all of you, but you brought it up, Mr. Crowdis, a great question. Um, like, you know, what's, what's going to happen with the kids? Are they going to be able to start school in the classrooms and whatnot? We have been working very closely with the architects and um, like Shelly said, I went to that meeting this morning at Legion and, and we're getting a feel, feel of what can we do to get out of their way and what can they do to expedite the process so that we are interrupting education, not as little as possible, but not at all. You know, we, we have libraries, we have cafeterias, we have a few empty classrooms, we have PLC rooms. So we're utilizing all of those areas to put kids in so that we can get out of their way, keep the kids safe, and let them do what they have to do to get us in there. So that's the educational side of, of your answer. Um, so I wanted to speak to you about our new teacher conference that I um, told you we were in the planning phases last time. Um, on July 26th, 27th, and 28th, we're gonna have between 75 and 100 teachers who are gonna be going through trainings. It's um, from eight o'clock to 3.50 all three days. And it's gonna be at HL's campus. We're inviting you to come drop in, in and out, and see what's going on. Um, on day one, uh, Mr. Angelon is going to address the crowd, welcome them. Um, and then we have 27 different se sessions going on on day one that the teachers are gonna be able to rotate through some are mandatory, some they're gonna be able to choose what they're going to. The second day, um, is there, there's 40 sessions, and the third day we have 36 sessions. Um, some of those uh, sessions that we're gonna be having, Achieve 3000 is doing some presentations. Uh, we're gonna be teaching our teachers about Edge Elastic, Nearpod, J Campus, Go Guardian, School Status, all of those things that we use in our district that individual schools are having to teach new teachers about or we're having to in the past have after school trainings we're doing that all on those three days with those new teachers and then in addition to that we have a showcase area that has 11 booths scheduled um, that's going to be our own hr department insurance um, tfae is going to be there to talk about new teacher grants then we're going to have our federal grants person there talking all of those things that teachers need to know that they're having, they were having to wait in the past, we're doing all of that plus their curriculum, which is the mandatory sessions they have to go to. So that's what's going on with our new teacher conference. Um, please come by and we'll see what's going on. July 26th, 27th, 
27th and 28th. And the times, oh, okay. all day. 8 to 350. Okay. Are you going to have donuts? Um, not donuts, but there will be breakfast every day, Chick-fil-A, uh, biscuits, and fruit, and all of the food is being provided by vendors. That None of that is at the cost of addition. So when you say new teachers, it's brand new or first year or two? It's or? new teachers to our district. They might, they might be coming from another district, but they never even, or brand new teachers coming right out of college. If some of the overall talk to you, I spoke with the TFA lady. Actually, they're alone. We're talking about trying to reach out to more new teachers, and they'll have a right there. Yeah, and that's what she's TFAE, so we do have a booth for her now. She won't give out money when she needs to. Yeah, she's going to talk about the new teacher grants. Good, good, good. All right, thank you for reaching out to us about that. Okay, any more questions? Thank you. Next, we, we, do we have a list of people coming up? Or? Johnson. Okay. <laughs> good evening. Of course, the most important part of us right now is making sure that every classroom has a teacher at the opening of the school year. And I'm more than sure that we will. Uh, we have declared critical shortage, because you know there is a shortage. So this will allow some of the retired teachers to be able to come back in the classroom without their retirement pay being cut. They would earn a check from us, plus get their retirement. So teachers are, principals are reaching out to some of these people that are eligible to come back. We've even declared critical shortage for bus drivers. So even bus drivers will be able to come back and work full time without their pay, uh, their retirement checks being affected. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, uh, could we get a list of who the um, retired teachers are that are coming back? Sure. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. Yes, are we in the phase yet um, that the associate degree people are retiring any of these people? Or? That is brand new and it's been thrown out there but all the kinks haven't been worked out yet because they're talking about you can only pay them a certain percentage of a certified teacher's salary so we're kind of sitting back and waiting to see what happens because I think a lot of certified teachers who have done the work, gone for the four years, did everything will feel slighted when we start just saying, okay, we're going to just take people with an associate degree and, you know, let them be full-time teachers. So, uh, so we're not there yet. No, we're not there yet. We're going to see how that kind of pans out. Let, let the others do it first. Yeah. yeah. And, and another question. So, uh, you can take the part to you because the retired teachers are certified okay. teachers. So yeah. Yes. Well, I, I didn't know if there was like an equal. I think this is something that the state superintendent recommended, uh -huh. but it's not mandatory. Good. Okay. So I, I have a question about um, hiring people that have worked for us in the past, maybe on a conditional or probationary basis. Is that something that legally we have to do within our rights to do? Well, what we have to do is that now, at one time, we only had to declare critical shortage. One in paper for two weeks, and we were done. Now, critical shortage has to be declared year-round. And if someone certified comes looking for a job, then that retired person can be let go for that certified person. So this is different. This is saying if we had someone that worked in the parish before, Maybe they, they would let go for a reason that would not prevent them from being rehirable in any other district. Can we offer them temporary or probational employment, conditional employment rather, uh, for a situation where, you know, this happened in the past, we're going to deal with this, if it happens again, it's just, it's just like when we have a student that goes back to their base school, you know, it's conditional, it's under contract. So is it possible for us to do that or is that very It depends on why they were let go to begin with. Yeah, well, it's not something illegal or... Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, we've had people to come back. Like I said, it just depends on 
what it is. So that would be a case by case situation. And, and if person wants to, should they contact you or go straight to the superintendent? They can contact me because nine times out of ten, the superintendent's going to ask me that what's going on with this person because what I mean. There's no way for him to know all that stuff. Of course. Thank you. Any more? Just a real quick question. Do you have a list of the, the current openings the way that you have it in the building? Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, you're going to see some still vacancy in this. You may have about 15. Are they online? Uh-huh. Okay. Vacancy in this is online. Some principals are choosing to get a long-term sub to start the year out with, and that long-term sub could be someone who's certified but just does not want to work every day, commit. Most of those are people who commit to doing maternity leaves and those kind of things because they had a resident <coughs> teacher in January who they will have again this fall that they feel will be a perfect fit for their school, and they'll be able to hire that person in December once they finish their residency. So they'd rather not fill that position because they'd rather that person who spent that year with them already, and they know what they can do, uh, rather have that person Thank in the you. position. Any more questions? Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, Okay, working with uh, both local law enforcement PD as well as SO, we're adding additional SRO, one to AHL, switching from HPD to TPSO for South Bend, uh, Kadian and TCT will be added as well. Eventually, with a little bit of luck, if they finish their training, we're looking to add one of these apart in Caldwell, which will float between some different elementaries in that general area. That's it. Awesome. Yes. I'm saying there's going to be two at HL? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have a need for that at the gym? Yes. That yeah. was a big school. Largest enrollment. They also have some uh, more significant incidents over the years. So what they did is work with uh, in law enforcement. We looked at the rate of calls that they have. So that's why you need to park Caldwell on the list, gotcha. potentially. So based on need, based on calls that they get, based on calls that we phone to us. So back to their base schools in hopes to minimize some of the negative behaviors that have created their lack of success. So those two schools were uh, selected based on data as well? Based on uh, actually room. So this will be, we knew that there was a need on both sides of town. So uh, we're able to identify those sites because they had space in the middle. Any other questions? We'd like to elaborate more on this <laughs>
we did have nine meetings uh, September through May. The mem each uh, school got to elect a member to send to the ERC. We averaged about 27 members mm -hmm. to each meeting, along with the superintendent, myself, and then at some of the meetings, some of the other supervisors uh, stayed depending on the topics that were presented. Over the course of the year, we were able to answer 189 questions that were submitted by the committee. Uh, we were able to provide written answers as well as have discussion at the meeting. We paid them a $20 stipend that cost you 4400 bucks total for, for the year uh, to have that many members. Um, we also heard from the superintendent each time, monthly updates on the facilities, the master plans, uh, and then we also plan to use the same process moving forward starting and all of would like their new member in September through May at those meetings. Yes. So you mentioned it's twenty dollars per per member, but can you do anything at the end of the year to say thank you, let me feed you guys, get you excited about what you did, so you can be uh, an extension of our recruiting efforts? Because I think if you don't have the money for that, I think we should provide the money for that. I was going to say I. But if you want to cook in May, <laughs> the last meeting, if you I want to the meal, all the nine board members should get together, and we, we can come up with something. And, and uh, if you want to, you want to get the logistics worked out, we'll be there to serve those people and uh, show them our appreciation. I'm committing all the nine members. The question that I have is: in, in the past, not this past year, but in previous years. It seemed like um, uh, under uh, Mr. Martin's supervision that there wasn't a lot of activity. You know, there was a lot of people who didn't show up. And so, I mean, I, I like to hear that you had an average of 27. That's great. But did you do some sort of maybe a survey at the end of the year that satisfaction? That's coming. That's, okay. that's our next step before. Okay, because I think that that's seven. important to know how they feel about it. No, I think uh, dovetailing off with this, uh, Ms. Benoit, I think if you're, when your employees feel like that they're being heard and listened to, I think it's, uh, it increases their job satisfaction and it increases their, their willingness to, to dive in and to uh, engage. Thank you. Uh, almost a year now in your position. How's it going? It's, it's good. It's good. Yes. I, I can't say publicly what you want me to say. But I don't know everything. I have to learn. I know where you're going with that. Uh, uh, but seriously, uh, uh, yeah, you, uh, you guys settled in and. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but it, so I will say this. Most people. <laughs> From elementary education, we just wanted you all to be aware of Act 422 that was passed recently in the legislative session. Um, it states, um, it's from House Bill 12 uh, from Representative Nelson, prohibits the, prohi <clears throat> the promotion of certain students with reading de de deficiencies not remedied by the end of the third grade. Provides that if a student has a reading deficiency that is not remedied by the end of the third grade as demonstrated by scoring at the lowest achievement level in reading on the screen, the student shall be given prior to the beginning of the subsequent school year two additional screenings. Provides that if after three opportunities the student has not scored above the lowest achievement level in reading on the screener, the student shall not be promoted to the fourth grade. So uh, we just wanted you all to know that uh, what we have done as a district to address this uh, issue, um, 
we have what we call K through three literacy. Every third grade student will be screened at least three times a year within the first 30 days in December and then again in April. Results of the screener will be sent home to parents within 15 days of benchmark assessment using uh, the individual literacy plan that we will develop for each student. Um, that student, if they are below uh, grade level in K-2 based on screener results, the following will occur. Um, an intervention literacy improvement plan will be created. The plan shall be created by the teacher, principal, and other pertinent school personnel, along with uh, communication with the parent and or guardian. The plan will describe evidence-based reading intervention services the student will receive, um, like Amplify Reading and MPLAS that will provide also strategies uh, for the parent if, if they request it. Um, that ILP uh, will include daily targeted small group interventions, daily instruction in a tier one curriculum, suggestions to parents for at-home activities and possible activities, additional school literacy interventions after school. And so um, we believe that this um, endeavor that we um, will be doing uh, will make sure that those students are at least you know, we will have the majority of our students meet that criteria, um, and uh, we will have less students uh, who will be below grade level um, at that time when they, at the end of third grade and, and ready for fourth grade. So um, our district is uh, ahead of the ball because we did that last year, and we will continue to do that to address uh, what the legislature has done. Thank you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's say we have a student that does not meet the criteria and get your thing in the third grade. Mm -hmm. If that student doesn't reach that criteria in the following year, are they still mandatory retaining, or is there an exception for age? There are exceptions, uh, and, and, and that will be. Students? There are exceptions. After we do our screenings, um, we will move those. Um, children through the school building level review committee and then decide um, what type of further interventions um, that the, the district will provide and or um, if they then are retained or, or moved on right, on an individual basis. Concern. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Ford. So my, my uh, comment is more of a question, I mean more of a, a, a suggestion than a question, but now that we're under critical shortage, and this may be a Dr. Ola question, um, and we're allowed to hire these retired teachers, I've seen private schools in the area hire and recruit and hire our former certified retired teachers to come in on a part-time basis to do tutoring and to work with these, these, these kids that are in you know, hiring and special needs and whatnot. If we do that, instead of adding to the can we get some of these veteran elementary ELA teachers to come in? We, we have done that and we'll continue to do that. Okay.
they did as well. And some elementary and one high school decided to jump on the pilot. We saw so much success in it uh, that we decided to replace Renaissance Store that we've been using for ages with this program. It is a live, the teacher has the kids on the screen and can see who's missing questions and who needs help, it flags them. She can immediately pull them in, work on the things that they're having problems with. And it's no time for the teacher to prepare, they don't have to, because it's immediate intervention through the program. So we're hoping to see, really looking forward to seeing Monica Mills test scores uh, this year because they use it from day one and they saw a lot of student work. So we're hoping to see that with because we're going to do it K to eight in math and five to eight in ELA throughout the district this year. So hopefully we'll see. Ms. Ford. I excel is a great program. I use it in the food, but there was individual teachers at the high school level that had to give this description. Um, and this may be did we buy a package deal to where even our high school, and at least our algebra one and geometry teachers can use the ISL for their mathematics? Well, I think uh, due to the price and trying to cut down on program budgets, we were going to see what the success would be with five to eight before we went to that extra cost of high school. Well, the only reason I ask is because now that geometry is made for all students, not just uh, top faculty of all jump scores as well. And it has been traditionally, but now they're making it a requirement. Uh, that would be something to look at. I think we would consider that up to the first year of the, the initial purchase. programs for our high school graduates. So they can work with local companies. They can um, learn some energy-based skills that when they graduate high school, they can become immediately employable. I'm working very closely with the Louisiana Workforce Commission, representative from TIA, Terrible Educational, Terrible on Economic Development, and representative from the state with the apprenticeship program. So we're constantly right now in the planning stages and collaboration stages with those individuals. We have approximately seven or eight local companies that have expressed an interest in developing an apprenticeship uh, for our high school students. Um, it's a win-win of sorts because local companies can also recruit some labor workers that come out of high school with industry-based credentials and work skills that are being taught at their facility. So at the end of the apprenticeship program, the individuals have an opportunity to either stay on with that company or they can take their skills into the open market and have games employment upon graduating high school. So that's our current endeavor. Mr. Ford? Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you, because I've had conversations with KSD, with uh, what used to be golf islands, I've offered those guys, and I've told them in private conversations that you come every year and ask for this eye test. Are you working with our guys? To these programs. So uh, all I want to say is make sure you reach out to them because they have committed verbally and I want to see them put their, their words in action. That is, that is correct. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you, Ms. Jill. No. Good evening, everybody. So uh, special education is going to be working with our federal programs department to contract with an agency called LASARD. LASARD is part of the LSU Health Sciences Center, and it stands for Louisiana Autism Spectrum and Related Disabilities. What we're uh, going to be doing, the purpose of this is, of course, to provide training and support to our district leaders, teachers, and our principals. Uh, when it comes to helping out autism, uh, students with autism, and of course, uh, any other students that have related disabilities. Uh, when we looked at our, our data, 
starting the school year, we're looking at about 158 students that have, have been diagnosed as autistic. So we know that teachers need support, and just from working with the summer program, we had several instances where, of course, our teachers who are special ed teachers struggled and needed some extra help. And, and we know that regular classroom teachers, especially new teachers, will need this kind of support to be successful and to help these students. Uh, what's part of that consultation package includes them working with our district team, which we made up of people from my department, and we're still trying to also pick a few people that may be school, uh, school level. Uh, it will also be 14 hours of online, all personal, in-person training. The first of that training is going to take part with my entire special education department. Uh, we're going to do that on one of our professional development days. And then from there, we'll divvy out the rest of the trainings based on where we see some needs. One of the things we'll do is we'll send out a survey to schools, also take a look at the data, see where our biggest pockets are of students, and try to figure out where we can put that support in. Uh, and then also involved in that, and this is the, the part that I think is going to be most impactful, we get 36 coaching sessions. A coaching se session could actually be one-on-one -on -one with a teacher or principal that's having a situation, or, or it could be a team of teachers that teaches the same student, so that they can help do observations, give feedback to those teachers, and come up with plans that will be realistic and helpful to that individual student. So we're looking forward to that, and we're very excited to be able to help our students to call this. Any questions? Thanks. Thanks. All right, I would like to give an update on PK. We have um, approximately 950 seats in our district. So far, we have about 600 that are already registered eligible students. We're looking for another 180 to fully fund our project. We have, if you subtract those numbers out, we have room for about 180 over income. We've already placed 90 of those before May 8th. We've got 11 that have sent in paperwork after May 8th. So when my staff gets back later this week, they're gonna be able to process those and process the other 20 applications that we've gotten in the month of July. So we're good. Um, out of the, the four, we've added only four extra classrooms instead of five. Schriever didn't have the need for it because there's still 18 seats available with the classes they already have. So we haven't placed that fifth position. So with those um, added 80 spots, we fill 30. So there is room. I feel very good about it. I feel very comfortable that we're going to meet our eligibility number as well as be able to service those over income. Yeah, I'll make a prediction. 
with programs like, well, with, with this vote plan explained, and for special ed, what Mr. Uh, Peltran talked about, and the fact that we're starting pre-K for all our kids as soon as we can, the new law that Mr. Uh, Johnson talked about will probably not even affect us because they will learn to read and write by the time they are in the third grade. Good job, the, the, the dynamic duo, uh, Ms. Boplan, Ms. Uh, Degrees, and Mr. Pellegrin. Y'all must have had some really good teachers. <laughs> targets for 2024 will be released August 1st, so schools can start using those to plan for their students. Um, high school rosters will be released after October 1st, and then you know, the high schools can go from there. Uh, the other thing I've been working on is the 2023-24 Pupil Progression Plan, and so I'm revising that to include a few changes um, and taking into consideration, into consideration some recent legislation. So I should be ready to present it at the next education committee meeting for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Uh, That's it. Thanks for everyone's update. Very interesting, and can't wait for next month to hear what's new then. Okay. Uh, I do have a comment just off of what she said. Uh, would the would the score be delayed a little bit? Give our teachers a little extra time when it comes to writing the SLTs, and you know that's always a big thing, especially for our core teachers having those those previous years. They have until October. Yeah. Thank you. How about in the journal? Uh, yeah, we can do it. Second. And um, 
All right, we're going to call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Uh, uh, Mr. Crowder, I'm going to ask you to sit on this committee uh, tonight, if you don't mind. Yep. Um, everybody left, so I guess I don't have to call roll. <laughs> Mr. Ford's here, the superintendent and staff, Dr. Traha, Mr. Voisin, and Mr. Crowder, uh, and members of the staff. Um, first order of business is an update on life insurance renewal, Mr. Constranza. Good evening. Uh, this is not a recommendation, it's only for your information. However, since we uh, put this on the agenda, we have come to a deal with uh, our Companion Life uh, carrier. Uh, Companion Life was uh, asking for a significant increase which would have been in the uh, excess of 15% uh, increase. Now, Companion Life carries both our life insurance, which is our basic life that we carry and pay for all our employees and retirees. And they also carry the optional life, which is optional. Employee can decide to buy more life insurance on their own, up to 300000 if they wish. And they also have our disability insurance policy. They were not going to increase disability. They were not going to increase the optional life. They, were on, they wanted to increase um, the insurance on basically the retirees. Um, the rate that we've always maintained over the last few years has been 37 cents per thousand for the retirees. And 39 cents for active because the actives have a what's called an accidental death and dismemberment on it. Uh, they wanted to raise the retiree rate to a dollar 42 per thousand, which is a very significant increase. And some of the retirees, those who are not on the Medicare Advantage plan, pay 40 percent of their life insurance premium. Uh, so that would have been an increase for them. So the reason they want to increase is because there was an increase in. Uh, claims and they were basically barely even breaking even. So with that said, we kind of went and wheeled and dealed with them and said, okay, you want some more money? How about instead of giving it to you on the backs of retirees, I give it to you here. So this is what the deal came up with. Um, so the retirees will stay at 37 cents per thousand. Some have 25, but when they reach uh, 70 years old, it goes down to 12,500, and at 75, it goes down to 8750. This has been the way it has been since probably the 80s. It's always been this way, but they will not see an increase. What we will do in, instead is we will increase the active members. So everyone who's actively at work and not retired, full-time people. Instead of 25000 they will have $50,000 worth of life insurance. And just the increase in premium there will cover the needs that the insurance company has. So none of the rates will change. We'll just buy more in life insurance on the, uh, the active members. So everybody's working right now has $25,000. Come October 1st, again, I'm going to have to bring this to committee. Uh, and, and uh, to the full board, probably the first meeting in September. Um, but once it's approved, October 1st, all active members will go to $50,000 worth of life insurance with an ADD on that. Um, all employed, but that's yeah. all full time employees, uh, whether it be a para to the superintendent, they all will have $50,000. The school board, the school board, the, the actual increase instead of 15 is going to end up being 9.6% increase. So it's a less of an increase. And because uh, what I told our broker was if I'm going to pay more money, I want something for the money. So that's how we're getting that done. Um, we also asked for them for a third year. Uh, so we're going to get this as a three year guarantee. Uh, but I will bring this to you uh, at the committee, the committee meeting in August and then again for your full approval in September. 
Okay. And you'll bring it to the insurance advisory committee when? Um, either right before school starts or the week after school starts to let everybody get acclimated and then bring the employees in to discuss it. Right. But it will be before the committee meeting in August. Any questions for Mr. Constranza? Yes, sir. Mr. Ford. I know business is business, and I, and I know they're, they're in the business to make money. But my question is, are they going out to these schools and visiting with the full-time teachers and staff to try to encourage them to buy this additional life insurance to maybe make up some of that money? Because it seems as though they're just relying on us. Well, they're treating them as two separate parts. Um, the optional life there was no increase on they're doing well there it was the uh, the life insurance that we buy for our employees that the the, the board uh, pays for that they were losing money on and that's where we uh, needed to work a deal out um, all employees when they're first uh, onboarded they have a packet that explains all their benefits and what and how much life insurance they can buy I think they can get up to two hundred thousand without a physical, and they want three hundred. After oh, more than that, up to three hundred, they would have to go through a physical. But um, they're all given that information at the time of employment. If they don't get it at that time, then it's subject to insurability. So I'm, I'm aware of how that works, and I'm very pleased that they are giving double the coverage, basically for only a nine percent increase. But I think. Uh, some of the efforts could be served well if they were actually in the schools just like Aflac and these other people that are out there to sell that supplemental insurance to try to get people to sign up because um, I think that's one of the ways that they could maybe bring in some more revenue and they wouldn't have to worry about because it just seems as though maybe I'm off base it seems as though they're putting the onus on you and, and the board to basically fund you know everything like I'm pleased that we're getting 50,000 instead of 25,000 but that seems real easy for them I mean I know there's negotiations and whatnot but they didn't have to work real hard to get that you know they just had to threaten to go up on their prices and well they do that all the time yeah. it's just it's not really correct but um, I think what you're referring to is selling during the year getting them to buy during the year but it's not an open enrollment period during the year. They don't get it within the first 30 days of employment. Uh, they have to go through medical uh, if they want it at all, right? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah, so the open enrollment's usually what, October 1st through? There's no open enrollment There's on uh, during during the year unless we have a change It's a new plan. hire. They're, they're, they have, have to get it within a certain period of their initial mm -hmm. uh, hire. After that, it's they can get it anytime they want, but it's subject to insurability. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you for working very hard with uh, the agent, Mr. Alfred. Uh, I know that he worked real hard uh, finding different vendors to, uh, to 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 make sure that we did not have a, a rate increase. Uh, item three consideration of adoption of the budget resolution the committee recommends that the board approve and adopt the budget adoption resolute the, the budget adoption resolution <clears throat> which provides for adopting the original operating budget for the general operating fund the one cent sales tax fund the half cent sales tax fund three quarter cent sales tax fund the trial nutrition program fund and the special uh, the various special revenue funds for the 23 24 Mr. Crowdis, that's you. So moved. Moved by Mr. Crowdis, seconded by myself. Anybody in the general public wish to address this motion? Mr. Crowdis, anybody else? Uh, does anybody want me to read the resolution? I'll read it uh, if y'all want. It's only 20 pages. Uh, okay, no, okay, shoot. Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Can, Item four, consideration of adoption of the fiscal year compliance uh, questionnaire. Uh, the committee recommends that the board approve and adopt the following resolution in reference to the attached Louisiana compliance questionnaire for 22-23 fiscal year. Mr. Crowdis? So moved. Seconded by myself. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? 
Mr. Crowdis. Um, not me, anybody else? Um, do you have any questions? Or it, It's something we do every year. I know. We're required by the legislative auditor, and basically it just says that you have not knowingly violated any rules, and you have turned in all your documentation on time, and you followed all laws and regulations that you're required to follow. Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Item five, matter pairing, <coughs> pairing on monthly budget to actual and the um, sales tax collections. Ms. Klingman. Good evening. The uh, sales tax collections for the month of May are, it's still a decrease, but it's much smaller than what we've been seeing. It's uh, a decrease of 1.67%. So it, the gap has squeezed a little. No questions. Uh, what, that's it. And then the yeah. monthly budget to actual comparisons are in your packet. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Klingman. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Crowdis, seconded by myself. Any objection? Leading over. Examination of invoices for the current month, including supplemental payroll and travel expenses. Are there any committee concerns? Being no, no committee concerns, do I have a, a motion to accept the motion payment of invoices? It's a motion by Mr. Uh, Boisin, second by myself. Any public comment? Mr. Boisin, myself, any board members? Any objections? None heard, so ordered. Uh, being no further business in the executive committee, the meeting is adjourned.